welcome you to the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. We are inside the Georgia Dome in downtown Atlanta, and we have black and gold, and we've got blue and orange. We have Tiger fans, and we have Tiger fans. Welcome to the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper, the 11-1 Missouri Tigers against the 11-1 Auburn Tigers. Hi, once again, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson. You can make a pretty good case that this is the most improbable pairing in the 22-year history of this game. Consider, if you will, Missouri a year ago, first year in the SEC, they finished two and six in conference play. Auburn, a year ago, charter members of this conference, they finish zero and eight. These two teams have completely turned it around. The Tigers and the Tigers have gone from two and 14 to 14 and two. And Gary, they are having magnificent seasons, both of them. You know, Vern, I think the motivating factor for both teams was last year. I mean, sometimes being humbled helps you. And, you know, for Missouri, their whole program was questioned when they came into this league. They are in their face was they couldn't stand up to grown man football. And they were questioned whether they were tough enough to play in this league. And this year they showed they could do it. And for Auburn, they reside in the state with Alabama. Back to back. Three peat. They had it ingrained in them for almost three years now. I think that was a motivating factor for these seasons. Well, let's talk first of all about the Auburn Tigers. And one of the wonderful stories this year is the emergence of Nick Marshall as their leader. Yeah, I think he's the key to the football team for Auburn. I mean, he's kind of grown into this triple option offense for Auburn. They're going to hit you with so many different weapons within their option offense, but Nick Marshall brings the speed. Don't sit on that arm because if you come up too close, he'll hit you. And then obviously he can improvise with the best, like the way he beat Alabama at the end of that football game. He is a weapon every time he snaps the ball. Well, the Missouri Tigers were ravaged by injuries last year. They are healthy, much healthier this year. Yeah, and what Missouri brings to the game is, number one, they did get healthy, but number two, they are a balanced football team. And when they attack Auburn, they're going to have to stop the run and the pass. But I think the key is going to be James Franklin as well. Auburn has not faced a lot of dual-threat quarterbacks. They haven't had great success. But if James Franklin can get those yards from the quarterback position, I think he'll be a part of the game. Let's talk a little bit about Missouri's defense. I think it's the biggest mystery in this game is why people don't talk about Missouri's defense. They've got athletes all over the field, the best front four in the SEC, but on every level, they got playmakers. Andrew Wilson, a linebacker, and E.J. Gaines is one of the most inspirational and talented defensive backs in this conference. Well, you nailed it last week when we did Alabama-Auburn when I said what's going to be significant in determining you get another chance to prove how much you know this game. All right, I'm going to go this way. You know, both teams feature the spread, but the two numbers are going to matter in this game is one, four yards. That's the distance between the two tackles. Whoever controls that inside running game has a great chance to win, and the next is four inches because the height of the Missouri Missouri receivers better play a factor or Missouri's going to have a tough time. This ought to be a really entertaining contest. It's Missouri, Auburn, the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. The SEC Championship on CBS presented by Dr. Pepper is sponsored by Kia. Chick-fil-A. Allstate. And by Dr. Pepper. Listed capacity in the Georgia Dome, 72,000. We probably will exceed that. The Missouri Tigers and the Auburn Tigers. And first on the field, making their first appearance in the championship game of the SEC. The Tigers of Missouri. Tigers of Auburn head coach Gus Malzahn. 
Let's go down to Tracy Wilson, who is live with Gary Pinkle. Well, thanks a lot, Vern. And, Coach, this is by far the biggest stage your team has been on. So what did you remind them before they took the field today? Just like it's an, another game. We're just going to do it. we got to go play football. We're playing football today. That's all we got to do. They, they, we play football pretty good. How about this Auburn team? What will be the key to come away with this win? Well, they're a great football team. You know, it's turnover. It's kicking game. Great offense. All the things that you do to win or lose games. It, it, in big games, that's what happens. Good luck today. Thank you. And guys, I had a chance to speak with Auburn head coach Gus Malzahn, and he told me that last week was physical. It was emotional, but he said they've been able to come back each week, and they need to rise to the occasion again today. Guys. Thank you, Tracy. Tigers and Tigers. Back in a moment. This is not the way the season was supposed to end. But isn't that why we watch? Everyone loves a comeback story, especially when it's ushered in by one of their own. Touchdown, Auburn, my gracious. It's inspiring to watch newcomers prove they really do belong. How about that? He beat him over the top. A terrific piece of running. Touchdown, Missouri. We believe that prayers can be answered. It is tipped off. And Lewis going on to the it. A miracle in turned hair. A miracle in turned hair. And when you're overlooked and face adversity, it makes it all the more gratifying when you reach your goal. Josie running left, cuts it back right to the 20, to the 10, to the house. What a story in Atlanta next week. But most of all, we watch to see if it really is true that any team on any given day there's a second left can turn the inevitable 57 yards for the win into the incredible it is sailing no return by chris davis there goes davis oh my god davis is going to run it all the way back auburn's going to win the football game holy cow auburn is going to the championship oh. The Cinderella's have arrived in Atlanta. Question is, who will have their storybook ending? This is why we watch. Indeed, it is why we watch and why we love this game. The championship on CBS presented by Dr. Pepper. This is the 23rd playing of this game. Started in 1992 under the leadership of Commissioner Roy Kramer, who is here tonight. The East 11 wins, the West 10. The fifth appearance for Auburn, the first for Missouri. Auburn won the toss. They deferred. So they will have the football at the beginning of the second half. And meanwhile, it's Missouri. Cody Parkey to kick off. Marcus Murphy, number six, drifts back five yards and takes the knee six yards in. And here's James Franklin, Gary. When James Franklin is running this offense the right way, he's Frank the Tank like he emerged as a sophomore. Watch for the quarterback draws, the quarterback traps, and that wide open spread offense where he's tacking with those wide receivers. Franklin missed three full games with a shoulder injury this year. Hampered much of 2011 as well. He is one of 20 Texans on the Missouri football team. First down 10, 25-yard line. Hand off. Henry Josie breaks a tackle. And he's across the 30. And let's introduce you to the starting lineups presented by Dr. Pepper. Britt at left tackle. That face you saw on the tees belongs to...
Coop Copeland, Max Copeland, Bain, McGovern, Morris, Josie in the backfield. Four wides. Marcus Lucas gets the start and stay, uh, instead of Sasser. Here is Josie again, tripped up as he goes across the 30 after the 33. Defensively for Auburn. Ford, Igwe, Gabe Wright, who's had a really nice junior season. Ladarius Owens, McKenzie, Holland, Therese, Mincy, Whitehead, Smith, and uh, you might remember the name Chris Davis. Third and four. I think actually on that last play, Josie just tripped. I didn't think anybody tackled ah. him. Four-man rush, speed on the edge. They got him. That was D. Ford who came around the end. Uh, you talk about having a good year. Ford is. Well, when the emergence of D. Ford, we first noticed him. Our first glimpse of him was against Texas A&M when he finished off Johnny Manziel. But as much as we might, might want to talk about Michael Sam, they got one here at Auburn too. D. Ford. And so his ninth sack of the season, and Christian Brinzer is on to punt. Three and out for the Missouri Tigers. Chris Davis is deep. He's averaging 20-some yards per punt return. This one short and takes a hop back in favor of Auburn. So a rough start for Missouri. Very odd strategy by Missouri punting that football. They use the technique that you usually lose. Look at that, Vern. He drops the ball straight down and does an end-over-end -end kick. I think that's a lot of respect for the return team for Auburn, Chris Davis. See that? Usually you do that when you're trying to stop the ball inside the 10. He was right. very close to something you and I remember, yes. the drop kick. Yes, that was... Now look at the field position Auburn gets right here. Yep. And so Nick Marshall... And Trey Mason in the backfield. That's Ricardo Lewis, star of the win over Auburn. Here's Mason. He's over 1,000 yards for the year. E.J. Gaines makes the tackle. Well, this is the counter. One of three base plays that Auburn will run. And when you get Trey Mason running the counter and the dive, that's two-thirds, and the last one is a zone option. Gain of seven, second and three. Mason with better than 1,300 yards this year. He'll test the middle again. Now, well, Nick Marshall, a year ago, the starting quarterback for the Garden City Community College in Kansas, a team that went six and four. This is where Gus likes to go deep. In the SEC Championship in 2010, he stung with an early play-action pass. That was Cam Newton throwing it. Nick Marshall not quite that good a quarterback. I mean, a thrower. And he's tripped up as he tries. Tony Ely got it. Number 47. Gary, take us through well, that play. I thought it was just teed up for one of those play-action deep passes. Second play of the game in the 2010 SEC Championship. And this was Cam showing his arm and just stunning South Carolina. Loss of two, second and 12. This is Copeland in motion. He's the speed back. Fake. Fumble. Missouri's got it. The Tigers are now plus 16 yes, in that was, turnovers. That was Coney Ely, number 47. One of those two great defensive ends and just swatted out of the hand of Nick Marshall. Just blows by the defender coming from the outside to the left side and watch him go for the arm and he gets the right arm from behind. Matt Hoke recovered it and now the excellent field position is reversed. There's the slap. Ely forces the fumble. Missouri's got the football. See more of today's SEC Championship game with the all-22 camera angle exclusively on CBSSports.com. Watch all of the action live now at CBSSports.com slash SEC. That was a very risky call, I think, by Gus Miles on going play-action pass against the speed that Missouri has a defensive end. 
Uh, Auburn tried to block them with a guard kicking out, and Ely ran right by it. That's pretty good on first down, or maybe second is short, but second and long, that's a risky call. First down 10, Missouri. Henry Josie still the running back, goes to the outside, cuts up. Look at that young man run. Well, Gary Pinkle says that Henry Josie is sacred to Missouri football fans. What he's went through, it's been well documented, but what a great thing to watch this guy run. He was, when he was a sophomore, he was breaking out to be one of the best in the country in his position. Franklin gets out of the tackle, lobs it out, incomplete. Now let's take you back. If you don't know the story, it's a, it's a, it was a horrendous knee injury suffered late in the season two years ago, right there, against Texas. And he had rushed for over 1,000 yards in 10 games prior to that injury. Interesting, he does not wear a brace on that knee. 17 months of rehab. He missed all of last year. And he ripped apart everything that's a part of the knee. Second down and 10. Doriel Green Beckham, the sophomore, 6'6". Here's the option. Franklin keeps it. Oh, baby. Wow. Casanova McKenzie with the tackle up high. Franklin comes out and, you know, part of their option attack is what you have to run if you're Missouri because they don't have that triple option attack. So they have to keep the spacing for Auburn with that option play. Third down seven. Blitz, stunts, Franklin, deep left side, man open, overthrown, intended for Jimmy Hunt, yeah, number that, 88. That wow. was a busted uh, route that time by Jimmy Hunt. Franklin was not on the same page. Franklin thought Hunt was going to the corner, and Hunt kind of just stopped right there short. One-on-one, -on -one, he knew he had it, but then look at that. He just cuts his route off way too early. That brings on Andrew Baggett, who's had an inconsistent season. He started 12 of 15. He's only two of six since. And of course, somewhat notoriously missed from 24 against South Carolina. That one is just inside the left upright. First on the scoreboard after the fumble from Nick Marshall. The 16th turnover, plus 16 rather for the Missouri Tigers, and they are number one in the SEC. Gary, look at this, how close yeah, this was. Yeah, he snuck it inside the left upright, and remember, against South Carolina, it was the left upright that he doinked, as Vern would say. Yes. I copied that from somebody <laughs> else, by the way. <laughs> this is a non-doink. Good for three. Regional coverage for you, the NFL on CBS tomorrow, lead game, Kansas City at Washington, Jim and Phil and the gang will be at Tennessee at Denver, and it all begins with the NFL today presented by Southwest Airlines, JB and the Quartet. That is at 12 Eastern time. Three nothing on the field goal from Andrew Baggett, and he will kick off. Trey Mason is the deep man, number 21. Quan Bray is over to his left in case it's a little bit of a short kick. <laughs> Through the end zone, touchback. And let's introduce you to the Auburn offense presented by Dr. Pepper. Probably the most athletic up front is number 73, Robinson. Greg Robinson, uh, I know you admire him. He is a great football player, but he was not matched up on Ely on that sack. He was actually blocking down. They were pulling a guard to try to handle him. Very tough assignment. Well, here comes Robinson. 
and the rest of the offensive line. Everybody on that Auburn offensive line had a great game against Alabama. The more you watch the tape, the more I had to tell myself, wow, why didn't I mention these guys all game? They blocked them. First down, 10. Second possession for the Auburn Tigers. That's Corey Grant going left. Marshall up the middle. And let's introduce you to the Missouri defense. They will play a nickel today. Mike Sam leads the SEC in sacks. He's got Hope Brantley Ely, who made the force to fumble. And here's Ian Simon, who will uh, operate as the nickel back, the fifth back. He's a safety. And they will play nickel most of the ball game. Second down, six. Mason goes left. Got room. First down, Auburn. Missouri has already put in their backup defensive ends in. This time, Shane Ray, number 56, actually runs out of the play. And then Trey Mason does what he does so well. He finds the crease and attacks it. Play action. Here goes Marshall. There was Robinson. Yep. You could see Missouri with their attacking defensive ends and read perfectly that time to the outside, and Robinson cleans up to the outside. They hurry on first down. They hurry all the time, but especially Nick Marshall weaves his way near the 20. Greg Robinson's going to get called for holding on this one, though. A little too aggressive. Here he is on this side. I believe he's got Ely back in the game, blocks him one time, and then just a little bit too much at the end of that. Just too jacked up to start Holding. the game. Offense, number 73, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, still first down. Well, you consider him the best athlete on just, that team. We found this against Tennessee. Watch Robinson. He gets knocked down and does a backflip here to get up. Watch this man, 350 pounds and flips himself upright on the play just to show you what type of athlete he is. After the penalty, first down 13. 9.44 to go, opening quarter. Missouri by three. Mason tried to strip the ball, did Andrew Wilson. Number 48, Wilson leads the Missouri Tigers in tackles. Has for the last three years. Father Jay played for Mizzou. 87 tackles, six for loss, one fumble recovery. Second and 11. That's Jay Prosh, the fullback. And they hand it off to Mason, and he follows Prosh's block. It'll be third down. Michael Sam, number 52, made the stop. The style of the Missouri defense is different than Alabama. Alabama tried to take on blockers and build a wall. Missouri's defense will try to penetrate and make things happen in the backfield. Third and seven from the 38-yard line. Little trickeration. Marshall goes deep. Got a man. Caught. Sammy Coates. Wow, 38 yards. Auburn takes the lead. Sammy Coates came across the formation, but Nick Marshall obviously made the play. Now they line up, and then Parkey comes back. There is no defense for that. No, you're right. Well, it was that combo that tied the game last week against Alabama. That's a bit of a high snap. Nice job of getting it down. Sammy Coates himself, a tremendous triple sport athlete. Right here, the pressure comes right from the beginning, I think, by Ray. Beats one player, then beats another, Harold Brantley inside, and then a perfect throw. 
Take another look at Sammy Coates. Just crosses the formation, and no one on Missouri thinks there's going to be a play made, and by the time they see that Marshall is going to throw it, no time for Matt White to get there. Seven plays, 75 yards. Auburn under first-year head coach Gus Malzahn. Now we look forward to that in January, and the star of that show, male star, is Josh Holloway, and he was the man who provided the voice for that terrific opening to our telecast that I uh, hope most of you saw. And so, Coates from Marshall. And when Nick Marshall starts to improvise, somebody cover 18, right? <laughs> well, how about at the at the end of regulation or right. the last 32 seconds last week, Auburn ran six consecutive plays, and then Marshall went around the left side. Coach was open, caught it for the touchdown to tie the game. Monday on CBS, Melissa McCarthy and Billy Gardell star in a new episode of the hit comedy Mike and Molly Monday at 9, 8 Central, only CBS. Well, I think all the jitters are gone now. Do you? I think, you know, both teams, there's been a turnover, a stop by Auburn to hold Missouri to a field goal, and now this big electrifying pass. Missouri understands now that they're going to have to score points in this football game. I think they're going to have to get at least to 30 points to have a chance to win the game. New running back, Russell Hansbrook. Missouri will use three. Here's Hansbrook. Going to the right side. The Tigers turn around. Last year, five and seven for the full season. This year, 11 and one. Look at the improvement offensively. And the turnover margin is really key. Yeah, they, uh, 2012 was an ugly year for them. But they, obviously the injuries they had, it was one of the keys that Gary Pinkle had for the season. Franklin, it was a good block on D Ford. Now Franklin comes left. He's got it. Doriel Green Beckham. I thought Ford was going to get there, but somebody got back and blocked him. Mincy made the stop here, gain of 16. Well, when we talked about the four inches being important in this game, what we're talking about again is the size of the Missouri receivers. The defensive backs for Auburn, about 5'11", the average for the receivers, about 6'3". Quick flip, that's Beckham again. He is 6'6", Jermaine Whitehead. And Beck, Green Beckham, number one recruit two years ago. Had a good season last year, but nothing spectacular. Yeah, I, I thought he was a bit of a disappointment last year. I thought they expected more, but he got caught up in everything else that was happening for the football team. This year, everybody's way more relaxed, including Doria. Second down six near the 49-yard line. Franklin, right side, caught. LaDamian Washington. Well, I thought uh, James Franklin took a guess on this throw because Chris Davis had good coverage to the outside. He guessed that the backside receiver was going to be open, but he did throw a perfect strike. Washington is 6-4. Now here's the sweep right side, hands roll. We chatted with Ellis Johnson, the defensive coordinator at Auburn yesterday, and he said he was more concerned with the three running backs than he was with the four wide receivers. And the quarterback yes. draws. He yes. said, you know, yeah, they're going to get some passes on us. He knows that Missouri watched that Georgia second half, but the quarterback draw worried him as well. Flag down. Ball start. Offense, number 61, five-yard penalty. That is second down. Max Copeland, left guard. See Gary Pinkle on the sideline. His 13, there's uh, Copeland. Pinkle in his 13th season. There were early rumors after Sarkisian took the USC job that they might come after Gary Pinkle because he served on Don James' staff in Seattle for 12 years, but he quickly said, no, I'm staying where I am. Five wide. Off the back foot, got it again. Oh, that's a great play. 
Bud Sasser, number 21. An awesome play by James Franklin that time. Turned loose. The two inside linebackers are turned loose. That's a protection meltdown. And he gets rid of the ball to the outside to Sasser. Beautiful play by Franklin. Whitehead was the late arriving safety. Now, when you get close to the red zone, that's when the height of those receivers become a factor. And Franklin will throw. Here comes the rush from Lawson into the end zone. Is that caught? Yes, it is. Doriel Green Beckham, 28 the, yards. The height of those receivers. He just puts it up. I thought he was bobbling it a bit. Let's see if he got the ball cleanly. Franklin just puts the ball up in the air. Beckham goes up and gets it. And did it bounce on the turf? Another look. I didn't see anything. Looks like a keen, clean play, but when you're a quarterback and you can throw it up like that, boy, does that give you confidence. <laughs> Bag it for the extra point. Take us through it again. Well, we just mentioned those four inches, and you got one on one, Beckham to the middle. Franklin sees no safety. Squats just a bit. He's got him, and Jonathan Mincy has no chance with the high ball. That's 5'10 against 6'6. Yeah, that's even more than four inches. Missouri back on top. These two teams of Tigers trading punches. Well, that touchdown, called touchdown, certainly yeah, is worth another I look. I thought I saw the ball move. Auburn fans are going to be upset because the ball spins once it hits the ground. Watch the ball continue to move. See how it's rolling? The laces are rolling. That is not a catch. That should not have been a call to touchdown. And I think it's something that college football needs to do, like the NFL, is review every touchdown. That was a missed assignment by our replay official. I thought it with my naked eyes that the ball moved, and it did. Well, the backyard Stan Murray was uh, no more than six feet away and ruled it a catch. 5.40 to go, 10-7, Missouri. Wow. never going to be changed in the rest of this game. Missouri's just going to have to buck up and just, you know, they, they got the big one. The Auburn fans are saying, oh, my goodness. Thank you. Touchback. Now let's go back to the studio for a Chick-fil-A update. All right, Vern, left side of your screen, everybody. Bedlam and Stillwater, and this one was a touchdown. Blake Bell to Jalen Saunders. The Sooners beat the Cowboys and deny Oki State the Big 12 title. That means it'll come down to who wins between Baylor and Texas to go to the Fiesta Bowl. Vernon Gary, back to you. All right. Thanks so much. Amazing. We're going to have one of those crazy last weekends, last Saturdays of college football. Well, the, the craziest I can recall was 2007. When after it was all said and done, LSU with two losses went from seventh to second. Here's Sammy Coates. Downfield blocking. Coates at the 30. At the 20. And big Greg Robinson was out there blocking, I believe, is the guy who got the block to the outside. This play seemed like it took forever to throw the quick screen to the outside. But once Sammy Coates turns it on, he's under a 4-4-40. He has run in the four threes. There's the quick hit. After the made first down. You know what I love about this? Auburn got a bad break. That should not have been a touchdown. But they're just playing football. Second down four. Mason to the 10. And they're going to go faster and faster and faster. And take a look at the Verizon red zone, red zone numbers. 70% touchdowns, a national average 63%. First and 10. Man-to-man -man coverage for Missouri. Everybody up. Mason, nothing there this time. Perhaps a yard. No safety, no safeties. There's no two shell or anything like that with the two guys deep helping. 
Missouri has just challenged their corners to say, you got to stop them. When I went to practice Wednesday for Missouri, Vern, Coach Steckel, their defensive coordinator, says, we're going to treat it just like a wishbone offense. There you are. Second down and nine. Grant is the running back. Marshall strolls in untouched. You know, assignment football sounds e easy, but it really isn't. That time, number 47, Coney Ely got a bit confused, make one false step, and he's gone. Key blocks from Jay Prosh, the fullback. Brandon Fultz, number 11, the tight end. Cody Parkey, extra point. Auburn back on top. Five look, plays, 75 yards. You look at everything that's happening all at the same time. We showed you last week if you happened to watch the game. All these plays start the same, but you never know who has it. That time, it was number 14. Gus Malzahn, what he just said was boom! Fourteen ten. Auburn reclaims the lead on that 75-yard drive. Now it's time to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. Mr. Daniels. Well, everybody is going to look at one guy for the Auburn offense. They're all going to look at number 47. Foles goes around and blocks, and Jay Frosch reads the block and comes inside and blocks the linebacker. Everybody's reading the same thing. Watch this. Ely comes inside. Frosch goes around him and then fits on number 10, Control Brothers. Perfect. The options were there, and everybody did their job right. And as a result, Nick Marshall strolls in nine yards away. This is the fifth time in his first year as the quarterback with a rushing and passing touchdown. He had a 214-yard rushing game. The onside kick. Onside kick. I think it went the distance. Now I think Auburn's got it. Yes. We saw that same onside kick against Alabama in the 2009 game. Cody Parkey, the kickoff man, was the man with the recovery. And I think it was touched by the Missouri player. That's what made it a live ball. There it is. It was touched away. And then because it bounces back, it was touched. It's a live ball. Morgan Stewart, number 36, the running back, is the man who touched it for Missouri. Boy, how about Auburn special teams the last two games? Really? Those <laughs> punts down to the one-yard line? Yep. There was a certain kickoff return of a missed field goal, yep. I recall. I was just trying to really tell if Stewart touched it or not. Yes, he did. His left hand touched the ball. One more time. And it really doesn't matter. It doesn't have to go the 10 yards. on the field was that the ball was recovered, illegally kicked ball was recovered by the kicking team. The previous play is under further review. Re remember, the ball does not have to go 10 yards if the receiving team touches it. Once Stewart touches the ball, it's a live ball. Is there a question of whether Parkey hit it first, touched it first? I, I think that's what Ben Oldham is looking at right now. I don't think so. I think the left hand of Stewart got it first. Now you got to... I thought the left hand was... Okay, right... There, the left now. wrist. Yep. His left wrist got the ball first. Yep. And even then, it might have gone just over the 10-yard marking line. After review, the ruling on the field stands.
And so Auburn has the lead and the ball with 4.08 to go in an entertaining first quarter. They've got the ball at the 42. Ricardo Lewis on the end around. He's getting a block downfield from Mason and is hauled out of bounds by Matt White, number 17. Well, this offense is becoming devastating right now. I mean, you watch it and you wonder if anybody can stop this rushing offense for Auburn. They hurry up on first down. Marshall, Mason. Shane Ray, number 56 with the stop. And, and we're not even again talking about the offensive line, the job that Robinson and Dismukes and Slade and Kozen are doing up front. Mason again. Close to the 30. Shane Ray with the tackle for the second consecutive play. Yeah, and I would believe that right now, right now, Gus Miles on is thinking he's got two downs to pick this up. Third and two. Not now. This seems risky now. Yeah. You know, you don't see this a lot. In fact, talking to the coaches for Missouri, they speculated that Auburn does not read it as much as they call it in the huddle. They guess and just go with the call because they don't drop it very often on the ground. Fourth and five. Missouri in a three-man line. Malzahn's calling timeout. Yeah, that, that probably bothered the Auburn play call in this one. That's a different look. Auburn. It's their first time out of the half. Did he just said, he said, that's on you, he said to Corey Grant. Well, they have lost 10 fumbles on the season. They're fortunate it wasn't 11. <laughs> 229 to go opening quarter, 14-10. Auburn, they have the lead. They're facing a fourth down and five. And Cody Parkey comes on. His longest of the season is 47. Yeah. 54 yards. Uh, Butch, I, and, and, and just be awake here, Vern. I mean, that, you know, anything could happen here. We've seen long field goal attempts before. Or fakes. Or fakes, exactly. Here's Parkey. It's sailing right. He did not make it. Well, that was a big fumble and a great stop by the Missouri defense. Parkey had plenty of leg, but it slid right the whole way. See, the speculation here was that this was a called run play to Corey Grant. Grant thought Marshall had it when he went to the sidelines. Gus Malzahn said, that's on you. That was your football. And you can see Grant doesn't think he's supposed to have it. So Missouri has the ball with 2.23 to go. 24, beg your pardon. This is Marcus Murphy, the third of the running backs utilized by Missouri. None of them that big. They're all 5'10", 5 5'9", 5 and there's a claim of a face mask. Number 77, the uh, starting center for Auburn, uh, I beg your pardon, for Missouri, actually attended the Iron Bowl in 2011. He was on a recruiting visit to Auburn. There's Evan Bain. He's from Lee's Summit, Missouri, and he wound up signing with his home state team. Murphy, nothing. I mean nothing. This Auburn front four, I'm sure they've gotten tired of hearing about how athletic Missouri's front four is, and they are ready to play today as well. Now, D4, number 30, was leading the charge. Uh, he leads the cheering. You see Blackson is in there. 
Angelo Blackson, number 98, actually listed as the third team defensive tackle. Franklin pressured, trips. Got him at the 47. Just enough of a pass rush by those defensive ends to force Franklin up and not being able to make it. That was Casanova McKenzie, number eight. And it does appear that Casanova McKenzie is assigned to the quarterback in these coverages for Auburn. Fourth and one. Let's see if they're going to try to draw Auburn off sides. This would be a big gamble early in this game. to the right side. Franklin's got the first down and is finally tackled out of bounds by Chris Davis. Sprint option. I thought it was a tough call, but it came through. Nice blocking to the outside by Eric Waters, number 81, on the option play. And the clock stops on the first down and is restarted. Mark ready for play. Franklin still has it, drills it. Well, he didn't drill it. It was incomplete. He, he threw he drilled it. it low. Yes, he did. <laughs> Jimmy Hunt, the intended receiver. Second and 10. 14-10. Henry Josie back on the field. Goes right, goes left. Down inside the 20. He's closing in on 1,000 yards for the year. He needs 50. He sets up the block so well on this play. Davis is down. Josie, when he sprints wide, makes the block easier to the outside and then cuts back. Overrun by the Auburn defense that time. Anthony Swain just overran it. He wasn't even blocked because of the way Josie sprinted at the beginning. That's Ryan White and then Davis over the top. Yeah, that probably his left shoulder. Shoulder. El yeah. His elbow Thank rammed you. it in the ground and probably jammed his shoulder on the play. Ryan White down low, Chris Davis over the top. Of course, he is going to be remembered for the rest of his life for the 109 yard. Missed field goal return. It's worth another look. Andrew Griffith, the backup place kicker. It's short. Here comes Chris Davis. He gets a key block on Vogler. Mandel, the punter, was the last one. There was another. And here's Davis strolling into history. Chris Davis. Flags. First and 15. All start. Offense, number 61. Five drive penalty. Still first down. See Chris Davis getting uh, medical attention on the sideline. First down 15, 14, 10. This will be the last play if indeed they get the ball snapped, and they do not. Fourteen ten. That's the end of the first quarter. Auburn leads. We'll return to the Georgia Dome after this message and a word from your local station.
We begin the second quarter, 14-10. Auburn with the lead. Bird Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson with you. The SEC Championship on CBS presented by Dr. Pepper. And a report from Tracy Wilson. Chris Davis injured left shoulder, but he will be back. Great news for the Auburn Tigers. First and 15 at the 25. Empty backfield. Franklin looks deep. There you go. Picked off. This was a total misread between the receiver and James Franklin. James Franklin was throwing the ball right there. The receiver was running downfield. Watch this. Jerome Whitehead was standing there. Franklin thinks the inside receiver is going to hook right there, and he just goes long with Damian Washington. Miscommunication, turnover. Wow. That's a big turnover down there in the red zone, basically the red zone. But you can see Washington and Franklin not on the same page. That is only the fifth interception thrown by Franklin in 2013. And so a first down now on the interception. Here is Marshall. Gets a bit of a block on the edge. Yeah, I think we're going to give a holding on the bat behind that play. I think on number 62, Chad Slade. Here's Hubert Owens. Holding. Offense, number 62. Half the distance from the goal. Still first down. That is indeed Chad Slade. Yeah, he, as he pulled around, you could see it pretty clearly. There's Slade right in the middle of the play. The defender tries to get away, and he grabs him on the last play to try to hold that block. It's pretty easy to see. Great call. And so Auburn is backed up. And Marshall will send Jay Prosh's fullback in motion. Draw play right side. Mason. Donovan Bonner, number eight, linebacker, made the stop. There's Chris Davis. I beg your pardon. That's uh, Whitehead. Yeah, he was the recipient of a pretty easy one right there, wasn't he? Yeah. Yes, he was. Second interception of the season for Whitehead. And it's second down and seven. Mason comes left. Juan Bray backs away so he doesn't get caught with a block in the back. Andrew Wilson, number 48, makes another tackle. Yeah, Andrew Wilson is a tackling machine. He may not be 4 5 40, but he just snuffs out those plays like throughout his whole career. He almost beats the ball carrier to the spot on that one. Third and five. After the interception from Whitehead. Auburn yet to, uh, one of two, I beg your pardon. Here comes Sammy Coates. And Jay Prosh again, the fullback in motion. Marshall, quarterback draw. Nothing there. Another fumble. Picked up. E.J. Gaines, touchdown, Missouri. It was Cody Ely again who forced the fumble. It sure was. Auburn's trying to call a safe play. And that penetration again. That's the game plan for Missouri. They want to blow up these plays before they get started. And Ely does it. He's lined up at tackle this time. And how would you like that matchup? Instead of a defensive end, they lined him up at defensive tackle. Here's Andrew Baggett for the extra point. Seventeen fourteen. Coney Ely's lined up right there at defensive tackle this time. I think Reese Dismukes number fifty, the center, was supposed to block him. He runs right by Dismukes block. And a perfect bounce to EJ Gaines. And he 
dives in for the touchdown. Teams are on the teeter-totter. Back and forth they go. Gaines diving in for the go-ahead. Gary Pinkle. Nice job. Adam Zucker, New York, with this Heisman watch, presented by Nissan. Will Jordan Lynch make it to New York as a Heisman finalist? Two interceptions last night against Bowling Green as Northern Illinois was denied the MAC championship and a BCS bowl game. Front runner Jameis Winston and Braxton Miller take aim at conference titles tonight. Of course, SEC fans hope that one of them loses. Vernon Gary, back to you. All right, Adam, thank you very much. On the sideline, Nick Marshall. And during the time we were away, the doctor team physician came over and they were testing his a shoulder his right throwing shoulder yeah. I think it was not the last play but I think it was prior into the series we're being told it came on the penalty the first down call yes the helmet right to the top of the shoulder and I wonder if that had something to do with him losing the ball later face mask right on the shoulder well Tracy is working on the sidelines and we'll Fill us in as soon as she learns the nature, the specific nature of the injury. So 17-14 Missouri. Andrew Baggett will kick it deep. This one is going to go sailing through the end zone. Well, Missouri's first appearance in this game, Auburn is their fifth. Right. They seem to be playing with a little abandon. To it me. is, and, and it, it's almost out of control to me. I mean, there's been a lot of mistakes, a lot of penalties, uh, people lining up wrong, fumbles so far. It's been a bit of a sloppy game. Exciting game, yes. but a bit of a, a sloppy game to start this football game. Do you think they uh, will settle down, both teams? They better. Yeah. I mean, in the, in the SEC this year, if you have a minus two turnover margin, you lose 80% of the time. Nick Marshall has fumbled three times. He lost two of them. First down, 10. Marshall is back out there. He's got Sammy Coates near the 30. That was interesting. He gets some treatment from either the trainer or the doctor for his right shoulder, but never throws a pass on the sideline before he comes out on first down, he throws one. Three of three for 97 now. Coates has been on the receiving end of all three. Yeah, Missouri's kind of settled into this three-man line. It's that bare look with three men covering the guards in the center inside tight. Mason tried to get around the side. Wilson chasing him. And Trey Mason... Nifty run. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work for Missouri. I really don't. There's too much space to the outside. Too many plays that can bounce wide against this team. I think to go out of what they normally do, the four-man line, would be a tough changeup for the Missouri defense. Nick Marshall played his high school football and basketball at Wilcox County High School. First down and 10. Mason again. Braylon Webb. You know, how about this running the ball right up the middle? And no one's touching Trey Mason until he gets about eight yards downfield. Gain of 16. Mason now with 91 yards already in the game on 14 carries. And, and you know, Auburn Vern is doing this against a good rush defense. Missouri has held all 12 of their opponents this year to below their season rushing average. Uh, it's gonna, you know, they're closing in already, yes. rushing in this game, you know, 130 yards. And this was an Auburn team that went up against an Alabama team, and they're at the line, second down and eight. Sweep, slip tackle, Corey Grant. Donovan Bonner makes the stop. Substitutions. Have, yeah, no, me, no problem. Brandon Foles out there in front of it. All you got to do is throw when you're out there. Just throw your block at the guy and let the running back cut behind you. Third down, two. Mason is the running back.
His 15th carry. Yeah, that three-man line, they're cashing that three-man line. First down 10, they'll hustle. This may work on the blackboard, but right now, it's getting stoned. Andrew Wilson comes up and just finds a blocker right in the face mask. Marshall this time. Tackled at the seven. Matt White, number 17. It's the triple option that what it is. And even if your assignment is right, Kentrell Brothers had his assignment right, but you still got to tackle the guy. First and goal. Mason striving to the end zone and getting across. What a drive. What a drive. They threw the ball on first down and then they ran the next seven plays. 171 yards on the ground already. And I started to say a moment ago, but you got to wrap it up with this bunch. They gained 296 yards on the ground against Alabama. Cody Parkey with the extra point. Auburn back on top. Missouri's head. They get a turnover. Auburn makes them pay. This time the dive play, and that Trey Mason, he is strong legs to power right through for the touchdown. The SEC Championship game on CBS, presented by Dr. Pepper, will continue after this word from your local station. Trey Mason with 111 yards already in this game, 21-17. Coming up at the half, stay tuned for the Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway. Who could forget the incredible emotion from winner Yvonne Padilla Rodriguez two years ago and a happy but slightly more subdued Garrett Booker last year. That's coming up at halftime. Well, Mason, a gregarious young man. We had a chance to spend a half an hour or so with him earlier in the season. Looks you right in the eye, smiles, tells stories. His father, there you go, that's the grin. His dad is, uh, I don't have him on my iPod, <laughs> but he is a member of a rap group called They La Soul. Oh, my doink! <laughs> doink! Crossbar. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> You never know, do you? Let's go back to the studio for a Chick-fil-A update. All right, Vern, thank you. Uh, more fun from the kicking game, but uh, Baylor wasn't kicking. They're faking the punt left side of your screen, but Texas denying it. Low-scoring game on a cold day in Waco. They're at the half right now. Three apiece. Winner takes the Big 12 crown. Vernon Garrett. Adam, thank you. First down and 10 from the 25. Franklin, Doriel Green Beckham is back on the field. He has a shoulder problem. Here's Franklin, tucks it and runs it. And uh, games. I really believe James Franklin has to bring that to the table here today. Against Texas A&M in his last game, Franklin was 18 for 28 for 233 passing, but he rushed 18 times for 80 yards. He needs to bring that in this football game. Here's Hansborough. Fights his way for a nice gain. I think his knee came down before he gained the extra two or three yards. So second down and five. 9.45 to go first half. Ball is just across the 40. Marcus Murphy is now in at a wide receiver spot. Top of your screen. Franklin heaves it. Marcus Murphy has it. He's dangerous. He's a kickoff return man. Get the ball to your playmakers. A little hitch route to the outside. Ryan Smith does not make the tackle. And all of a sudden, you got your kickoff return man in space. Boy, when I said 30, I was way low. <laughs> I think so. Way low. Franklin popped. 
by Ryan Smith, number 24. Now, uh, substantial substitutions for Auburn. A couple of new players on the field. Nobody substitutes better than the Auburn defensive line. We've seen it all year. They get them in and out as good as anyone in the country. But Sasser has joined the field. Whoops. Against whom? Gabe Wright is the guy who jumped. He's claiming he was induced the head bob. Offside. Defense in the yeah. zone. Number 90. Five drive penalty. It's the second down. Well, we mentioned as we came on the air, this is the most improbable championship game perhaps ever. Look at this. In the summer, Missouri was picked to finish sixth in the east, Auburn to fifth, fifth in the west. Here's Franklin. Diving catch. Made by Marcus Lucas, number 85. That's another first 10. First and 10. Auburn, 8. The differential from last year to this, Missouri plus 6. First and 10 again. Quick flip, right side, Doriel, Green, Beckham. To Rizzi, that's 85, I beg your pardon, not 15. Marcus Lucas. Comes out again, but out of bounds. I think it was Chris Frost that knocked it out with his left hand. Yes, yeah, so and the ball just goes forward. Let's see if Auburn can match up here and these tall receivers down in the red zone. Second down, six at the 18. Franklin shakes a tackle, hit from behind. And then gang pursuit. Casanova McKenzie was the first man there. Number eight. You know, a lot of people speculated when Matty Mock won those games as backup quarterback that Gary Pinkle would stick with him. I think it was a great move to go back to Franklin because you can always bring Mock, the freshman, off the bench. Senior gets first chance to finish out the season. Third down five as you look at Matty Mock. And the other quarterback Prince who is the only Georgian on Missouri's team third and five here comes D Ford here goes Franklin into the end zone came down out of bounds Bud Sasser well the ball was thrown up in the air and Sasser had a shot to make the play let's see if it's defended well or he drops it oh he drops this one no right at the end of the play a great finish by Robinson Farisi gets his hand up there at the end of it or I think Sasser would have caught this ball Andrew, might have been out of bounds but yeah. I think he would have caught it Andrew Baggett with the field goal attempt he's hit one it's fourth and five the try is from the 36 it's 36 yards he's two for two Seven nineteen to go. We're midway through quarter number two. Got something brewing here in Georgia. Junior quarterback Nick Marshall will have his turn at quarterback shortly. How's he doing so far? Well, whether they call a cold run for him or he improvises on the deep ball or he runs the option play out of the base package for Auburn. He's the weapon we talked about. And now Missouri has to figure out what they can do to offset his ability to run the whole offense. And let's get an update from Tracy. Well, we saw Nick Marshall hurt that shoulder on an earlier drive. Offensive coordinator Rhett Lashley came over to him while he was on the bench, and he kept asking him, are you okay, are you okay? And Marshall just kept shaking his head yes. And then finally Lashley said, I'm not going to pull you. Just be honest with me. Are you okay? And the always calm Marshall just said, I'm fine, guys. I wouldn't come out of it. I'd have to come out on my shield. You don't come out of this game, right? You'd, you'd lie. Right? Yes, <laughs> I would. But they tested him with that short pass, and he completed it. Here's the kickoff from Baggett. This one will be returned. It's Corey Grant. He's got great speed, but unable to use it on that return. 
And uh, we always welcome the duck to our broadcast, so it's time for the Aflac trivia question. Who are the only two head coaches to win SEC titles in their first seasons? Keep in mind, this is an old league. Gus is trying to, of course. 14 years a high school coach. Chatted with him yesterday about his beginnings at Hughes High School with the Blue Devils. He started as the defensive coordinator. That's oh. Hughes, Arkansas, six he's miles a, from the Mississippi. He's a rich ex-old high school coach now, isn't he? Just got a raise. Here's Mason again. He's on the loose. There's one man who can beat him. And that man does. It's Matt White. Well, Darvin Ruiz, number 12, takes just one false step from his safety spot, and then that offensive line cleans it up, and Ruiz, not an option, not a chance. Give it again to Mason. That's Trey Mason's 19th carry in the first you know, half. It's becoming remarkable. Uh, Spencer Tillman asked me if Auburn could keep doing this without throwing, and I go, why not? <laughs> Another Mason run. Would, Vern, would you throw? Absolutely not. Why, why would you throw? I mean, just every once in a while to keep them honest. I predict you will see more and more teams copy this attack from Gus Miles on the triple option from shotgun. Up the middle, another Trey Mason touchdown. They have been unstoppable. That's demoralizing for Missouri. That is totally demoralizing. Right now, you're looking at the coach and say, Coach, what do we do? And the coach is going, I don't know. We're midway through the second quarter. Here's the extra point from Cody Parkey. The Auburn Tigers have put 28 on the board. They have rushed for 250 yards. And remember, Missouri has not given up 200 yards rushing all year in the whole game. And, and you've got Auburn gashing them like this. The star of this drive was Trey Mason. And now, I mean, the way Auburn is moving this ball, they just feel like they can score any way they want to. Trey Mason has rushed for 190 yards. What does he say? Boom! Boom again! Our group of CBS college technicians and production staff will move to Philadelphia next week. Something we all love participating in. The Army-Navy game presented by USAA will all be in Philadelphia, and it begins with the Auto Trader College Football Today Show next Saturday at 2.30 Eastern Time. What kind of a half do you think Trey Mason has had? He's See. almost got 200 yards rushing. Yeah. You know, and I, I just, I, right now if you're Missouri, you go, how are we ever going to stop him? But you do, Gary Pinkle does have to look at his team and say, come on, we're down eight. It's not the end of the world here. Let's just make first downs. Parkey will kick off. This one will be returned. Marcus Murphy, number six. Wow. The rushing comparison thus far. Auburn on the ground 33 times, 7.6 average. Missouri, that's more than a healthy average. Yes, so. exactly. You know what um, I asked... Uh, Auburn has only played one game on turf this year. Missouri has played 10. Doesn't Auburn look quick today? I mean, I think this turf making them look even faster than the grass they usually play on. They are playing at warp speed on offense. On first down, they've got Franklin at the 10-yard line. Carl Lawson, who had one of the key defensive plays last week when he stopped T.J. Yeldon on fourth down. Well, Carl Lawson is the true freshman, and you're right, Vern. This time he goes right around Justin Britt. 
The pocket gets collapsed inside, and the true freshman makes another play. Lost four, second and 14 at the 10. This inside sugar is bothering, the two linebackers inside is bothering the pass protection. This is Henry Josie, modest game. I saw Florida do this to Ohio State in the national championship game. They bring those two linebackers up the middle, and then Ohio State would shrink down to try to account for them, and it turned the ends loose, and Ohio State never recovered. That was in 2006. It's third and 13. Bain, the center, makes the line calls. Auburn brings five. Very good. Oh, Franklin goes left. Here comes Whitehead, and he dives. I think he might have gotten yep, it. What a play. That has to be part of this offense. I don't think there's any doubt that James Franklin has to get close to 80, 55 to 75 yards in this game. He has 31 right now on eight carries. I don't know if his knee was down before he caught across the line or not. Knee down, yes. Yep. I think this may be brought back. And now, if you're Gary Finkel, do you give the ball back to Auburn or do you go for it? This still should be reviewed. His knee went down. Yes. And it looks like Hubert Owens is... Well, watch this. Knee goes down right there. Right there. Yep. And that looks, you know, right about in here. And they're not reasonably not. Well, he still has time to stop it. I'm surprised. He still has time to stop it before the ball is snapped. Yeah, there's a timeout called. Did Gus Malzahn take a timeout? I didn't see that. Or was it just stopped? The ruling on the field was that the ball made the line of the game, and it was the first down. The previous play is under further review. Yes. We're going to have to tie these two together. Knee. This look and the other look. And I think he's short of that first down. They spotted across the line. It's going to be fourth and less than a yard. That's clearly short of the line when his knee comes down. And now Gary Pinkle has to make his second decision on fourth down. Remember, he ran the option on fourth and one before. Mm -hmm. But this one's, you know, on the 30-yard line. One more look. Well, I would bring it back. That ball is clearly not past the line when his knee goes down. Now they're showing it on the scoreboard here, the jumbotron, and you hear some of the crowd reacting. Now you hear more of the crowd reacting. And you can bet those are Auburn fans who are doing the reacting. Gary Finkel has to be in his mind right now making a decision on fourth down. He has to assume it's short. Remember last time he ran the option to the short to the right side of the formation. And so we wait. Just something to factor in here. Remember, Auburn gets the ball to start the second half. Here's uh, Hubert Owens. After review, the ruling is that the ball carrier was down short of the line of the game. The ball will be placed on the 23-yard line, fourth down. It's going to be less than a yard. Missouri has their punt team in. And it is Chris Davis averaging 20 yards per return who is back to receive this one. There's Davis. Andrew Baggett, or, uh, Christian Brinzer, is on the punt, number 92. Auburn has to concede the punt here. I would fair catch it if I was them. Concede the punt and play the fake. 
Wrencher does. And they do fair catch it. They did exactly that. Yep. Heck, the way they're moving the ball, why risk a return? <laughs> you, don't, you don't pass, and you don't <laughs> return the punts. Let's uh, cue the duck. Getting back on stage. The Aflac Aflac. trivia answer. Who are the only two head coaches to win SEC titles in their first seasons? Bernie Moore, 1935, and John Vaught in 47. Told you it was an old conference. First down 10. With 4.26 to go, this uh, running game for Auburn has been unstoppable. Sweep, Ricardo Lewis gets a block. On his way. Another huge gain. I'm trying to think of something that Missouri has to do. And I, I, I'm literally, I'm lost. I thought their penetration would cause problems. But that offensive line for Auburn is just cleaning them up. Here comes Mason again. And right now, Gus Malzahn will slow down. He'll try to run this drive just the way he ran the last drive against Alabama. He wants to score with under a minute in the half because remember, he gets the ball to start the second half. Less than two minutes per drive thus far for Auburn. Flip, Sammy Coates, not a lot at the 45 yard line. Tackle made by Kentrell Brothers, number 10. It was a key play in the game for Missouri right here. Third and three. Looks like they're going to go with their three-man line look. Will they blitz it, though? Marshall breaks another tackle. He's got a first down at the 40. That's the hardest thing to explain to people is just because you have assignment football, oh my gosh, another 15 yeah. yards. E.J. Gaines. Ridiculous. Nick Marshall thought he did not have his knee and got up, and Gaines threw him to the ground. But you know, I'm just going to say, and they might pick this one up, because I think Gaines thought the play was still alive. After the play was dead, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 31 of the defense. 15 yards added to the end of the run. First down. See, even though you're playing assignment football, you still have to make the tackle. Now, Nick Marshall thinks, I'm going to do a Michael Dyer and get back up. And EJ says, I didn't know. I think that ball, that flag should have stayed in the pocket right there. I think that's a tough 15 yards for Missouri to get. It is marked off, and it's first down and 10 at the 24 of Missouri. E.J. Gaines coming from the corner. And this is Mason. Andrew Wilson, number 48, with another tackle. You know, we haven't seen in this game, unless you've mentioned I haven't seen him. C.J. Uzuma has not no. been in this football game. Number 81, one of their main weapons. Now we asked Tracy to check on his absence, and we are told from Tracy it's just a coaching decision. So Fultz has been there. Here's a flip left, Sammy Coates. Oh, what a play by E.J. Gaines. Yes. E.J. Gaines had a brilliant game against Texas A&M. He shut down Michael Evans, only four reception for eight yards. The worst game that Mike Evans had all year, and E.J. Gaines produced it. Third and 11. Let's see if uh, Marshall will put it in the air. Can that front four put some pressure on the quarterback? Coates is down at the uh, bottom of the screen. Trovon Reed is one of the trio. Quan Bray is also out there. 90% of the time, they just rush four people. Let's see if they're going to be five. Gaines is on the corner, and he is coming. Marshall. Heaves it deep. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down. A flag on the play. Yeah, it's going to be holding. And I think you got to wonder now, what, will Pinkle try to move him back out of field goal range and risk another play? Holding offense, number 56, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, still third down. Yeah, he's going to take it. It would have been fourth down, remember. Right. 
There's Avery the Young, yep. yes. On Michael Sam, right? Yes. I think it was 52. Yes, it was. An aggressive call again by Gary Pinkle. And I don't blame him. The way points are, you know, tallying up here. But now you put, you know, a pass interference or a holding penalty gives Alabama, excuse me, Auburn a first down. Fulce, the tight end, is up on the line to the right. Third and 21 with 139 to go in the half. Three-man rush. Left side, Sammy Coates. What a stand by Missouri. Yes, it was. Donovan Bonner, number eight. Matt White, who's having a heck of a game. That's a loss of four to be fourth down. And Missouri will take a timeout. Donovan Bonner wrapped up what Matt White began. Kind of went out of sync for uh, Auburn that time. A couple of wide, wide receiver screens. They went away from running the ball between the tackles, and they never quite got it back in, in sync. Time call, 28-20. Missouri has the ball trailing by eight. Many great traditions abound on game day throughout the league. And each week we give you a taste of the SEC presented by Sonic. For more, here's Tracy. Burn for 22 years, one of the great traditions here at Championship Weekend is SEC Fanfare. With a variety of activities for all ages, Fanfare is the perfect way to spend the pregame hours leading up to kickoff. One of the other great Championship Weekend traditions is the honoring of the SEC Football Legends class. 14 gridiron greats were honored, headlined by the championship team representatives. Mizzou quarterback Phil Bradley, who led the Tigers to three straight bowl games from 1978 to 80. And Auburn's Frank Sanders, the acrobatic All-American wide receiver who played for the Tigers in the mid-1990s. Congrats to all the legends. All right. Miss Tracy, 14 and all. It was uh, a nice night last night. We had a lot of folks who honored these 14. Fourth and 25 now, E.J. Gaines. Penalized 15 yards uh, Call with which you did not agree. No, but it was a great stop after that personal foul. Here's Stephen Clark first punt today Forest Hill will snap it back. And that's Sammy Coates one of the gunners uh, the Lightning receiver Here's Clark Fair catch it goes. Oh look at this. Yep. And He's over done end. it again. And over end Flag is down though he had two inside the five last week in the Alabama game. I think they may have to kick this one over. Was there holding on the play by Auburn? Legal, Legal procedure. procedure. Yeah. Illegal formation, number and exception on the kicking team. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay fourth down. Now they're heading the wrong direction. I would assume what he said was they had an, a, a, an eligible player in an ineligible spot on the formation. And see if you can uh, spot it. One of them lined up and did not have the proper number in the formation. So Clark has to do it again. Fourth and 30 now. Hill snaps it back. He's done it again. Yeah, not much difference was there. Wow. The last one he kicked end over end to get it to back up. When he lost five yards, he kicked it normally but perfectly. He's quite a weapon. Don't forget the Geico halftime report is coming up. Geico halftime report. And Tim, Spencer, and Brian have joined us here. And look forward to their assessment of the day. Yeah, and, and excuse me, Vern, how aggressive should Missouri be? Remember, Auburn has two timeouts. You don't want to have to punt again if you're Missouri. Franklin dodges the tackle. 
and moves it out to Boy, the 15 yard line. He sure did dodge him, didn't he? Was he? I don't know exactly. Was was it Gabe Wright who I he dodged? I think it was. Yeah. Wow. And they go hurry up under a minute to go. First half, second down and three. Both teams with two timeouts. Here's Franklin looking deep, firing it across the middle. Ladamian Washington asks for a face mask call, doesn't get it. That's a gain of 16. So they're moving efficiently now, but the clock showing 40 seconds to go. Left side. Bud Sasser, number 21, stops the clock, getting out of bounds. Well, that first down scramble to start the series by Franklin really freed up the call, play calls for Missouri. And you see the 48 total points, most ever in this game, which began in 1992. Second and five. Right side, overthrown. That was for Marcus Lucas, number 85. When you overthrow Marcus Lucas, you're overthrowing a big man. I'd have thought Shaq O'Neal was out there. Third and five. Mizzou is 0 of 5 on third downs thus far. Hansbrough. Clock stop while they move the chain. And Missouri took a timeout as well. Okay, I thought they might. So Mizzou now with one timeout remaining. And they have moved the ball out to the 45-yard line. First down 10. Trey Mason having a memorable game. James Franklin playing quite well also. The Freedom Fighter, the Prisoner, the Champion for Peace. 48 Hours presents Nelson Mandela, Father of a Nation. That's tonight at 9, 8 Central. Only CBS. Now there's the face of football. That's Max Copeland. Originally walked on at Missouri. He loved the school. His father played there. He's a physics major. How would you like to share a test tube with that guy? 28 20. 25 seconds to go. Deep. He's got him open. Doriel Green. Beckham. Missouri touchdown. How do you do? Ryan Smith, it gives Doriel Green Beckham a 10-yard cushion, and Beckham runs right by him, and Franklin throws a perfect throw. Andrew Baggett for the extra point. Brayton Webb, Braylon Webb will hold it. It's a one-point game. It all started... When James Franklin brought the running game with the quarterback, he dodges a sack. The series is over if the sack gets made right there. And then a really cute little play by Missouri. The receivers cross here. Beckham's to the outside, a little wheel there, and Ryan Smith gets frozen. Starts for one second, doesn't get going, and Beckham eats up the cushion and a beautiful throw. Another high ball, those, geez, that would be these guys throwing these balls, you just look like you got throwing it into the post. Six foot six, what a drive, what an answer for Missouri. My gosh. Doriel Green Beckham. 55 yards. And that puts him over 100 yards receiving in the game. Four for over 100 yards, and it is a total matchup problem for the Auburn defensive secondary. At halftime, the Missouri team goes in and goes, Coach, please, I can th just throw a whole game. 
with the receiver. Just throw it in the play. And of course, they're not going to do that. And the Auburn guy's going, we can run any time we want. I go back to your statement at the end of our on camera. Four yards? Four inches. Four inches. Both teams are doing it. Auburn's running between the tackles, and Missouri is throwing the ball high. 28-27, final 18 seconds of the first half of play. This one is very short, taken at the 20. That's Nosa Igwe. Now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athletes. Two of them, Matt Hoke for Missouri. 2012 SEC academic honor roll and Trent Fisher recognized the name he's the son of Jeff Fisher the Rams head coach Hoke. there he is and, and just to kind of summarize again what else happened remember after the personal foul DJ Gaines the time at that point was 230 left Auburn was up 28-20 at the 24-yard line, first and 10. Missouri gets a stop, ends up scoring. What a turn of events. What a stop of that Missouri defense. We did expect an entertaining game. Uh, we've gotten one. 28-27. Tigers lead the Tigers. All the other Tiger fans from Baton Rouge look on and wish they were here. Tracy is with Gus Malzahn. Thanks a lot, Coach. They can't stop your run game, but what happened defensively there on that quick touchdown drive? Yeah, we had a little breakdown there. They made a play. Uh, you know, it's been a wild game, I and mean, we got to keep running the football. First quarter, though, a touchdown called by Missouri that was questionable. Why didn't you go for the challenge? Uh, you know what? We, uh, guys upstairs said there was a touchdown, so that's the way we looked at it. Did you talk to the officials about it at all after? Yeah, yeah we did. They said it was a touchdown. All right. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. I think you disagree still. Well, it wasn't, but, you know, <laughs> it's been a great game, but I thought the Mountain West game was tonight. <laughs> it is 10 o'clock Eastern on CBS. Utah State, Fresno State. We'll be back with the Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway after this message from your local station. This is what it feels like. And now we'll throw it for the end zone. He's got Cubs. He's got it. Beckham leaping grab. Touchdown, Missouri. Marshall strolls in on top. Throw back draw. Hit it to the 11 and yank down. Ball free. Picked up by Gaines. Touchdown, Missouri. Mason again. Touchdown. Wants to throw. Missouri touchdown. And we welcome you back to the Georgia Dome, the SEC Championship, presented by Dr. Pepper. 28-27 in an almost non-understandable way in the first half. That's not a good word, but you, you get what I'm well, talking I, about. Well, I'd be mixed up, too, because all this stuff's going ah. on. Let's go down to Tracy and get me out of this jam. She's live with Gary Pinkel. <laughs> well, thanks, Vern. Coach, a huge touchdown drive to end the half, but you've given up over almost 300 yards rushing in that first half. How do you get it corrected? Well, we, we, we're going to make a couple adjustments a little bit. we got to tackle better also. Uh, they've done a great job executing, and uh, obviously, uh, you know, we got to settle down a little bit on defense. And, uh, you know, it's a one-point game. we got to keep battling. You've made some bold calls in this first half. Do you think you have to coach that way because of the way Auburn is scoring? Well, they made a bold call in the onside kick, so these games you're trying to win a championship so they do, they do make the calls you think hopefully work and guess what if they work they're a good call <laughs> appreciate it thanks Vern. oh how <laughs> true that is thank you tracy <laughs> well when we came on the air a couple of hours ago you said it's going to be four yards and four inches right. it's playing that playing itself and, out and both has happened uh the four yards has been owned by auburn between the tackles they're running the ball at will and the four inches the mismatch of the receivers for missouri has not been able to be stopped by auburn i think the line of the day though is by gus miles on 44 plays in the first half and tracy says what do you got to do in the second half now remember he's only thrown six times he says we need to run the ball more <laughs> six passes yes exactly Marshall is six of six, by the way. So he's had a perfect day throwing the ball. And yards rushing, look at this, Gary. Well, and, and you can kind of understand it because that last drive by Auburn, they threw three passes. They kind of came out of character. 
They allowed Missouri to get one more opportunity, and it cost them seven points. Here's Ricardo Lewis on the end around. Yeah, doing almost, just pick a guy, hand it to him, almost everything's working. How about trends in the first half? Well, I can almost guess what this is going to say. Trey Mason. Nick Marshall is doing what he has to do, but six for six, and his coach said we need to, we can't throw that much. Six for six, that's too many. And, of course, James Franklin did his job when he had to, and especially that last pass was a picture-perfect throw. Here is the kick to begin the third quarter, and it sails through the end zone. So, again, touchback. And uh, Just Andrew again, Maggie, one it. more time. After that personal foul against Missouri, that one that I was even questioning, that's the biggest stop of the game. Because you give up a touchdown there, there will not be enough time for Missouri. And look at Auburn gets the ball to start the second half. So you look from behind at the Missouri bench. E.J. Gaines was called for the personal foul. And this is uh, another look at it. See, Marshall didn't think he was down. And E.J. Gaines goes, hey, this guy's pretty good. I think that's one where the officials just keep it in your pocket. First down 10 at the 25. 28, 27. This time they stopped Trey Mason. That was his 22nd, 24th carry of the ball game. Matt Hoke, number 89, with the tackle. Second down 10. Seen this play before? Yep. Braylon Webb makes a stop after a gain of 12. When I talked to Gus Malzahn and Rhett Lashley, the offensive coordinator, obviously the play caller, Gus Malzahn, as we look at this next hurry-up snap here. I asked him against Alabama, how many different plays did they run the game, in the game? Different calls. I know different formations, but different plays. He said 80% of our running plays were three different plays. The zone read, the zone read with the pulled guard, and the counter. 80% of the plays were just three plays. Saw that already Trey Mason has set a championship game record. Here's Lewis again, and he's driven out of bounds. Donovan Bonner, number eight, and uh, Trey Mason leading the way around the end. Well, a big third and medium. This is where that front four for Missouri has to make a play. Third down four. Or is it going to be a front three? No, it's going to be a front four. Yeah, Brantley comes on. No, it's going to be a front three. Yeah, somebody's got to hurry. Yep, and Missouri's going to have to time out. Call time out because Harold Brantley arrived on the field, and he was time told out. to get back. Missouri. It's their first time out of the second half. One of the things that Missouri staff and players said is we will have no problem with the hurry up. Now their offense might work, but the hurry up is not going to bother us because in the Big 12, we've seen it for years. Timeout taken by Mizzou. Third down three, offensive coordinator Rhett Lashley on the left, Gus Malzahn. They had a relationship when... Lashley was a senior at Shiloh Christian and uh, was his quarterback, Malzahn. Current BCS standings entering this week. Florida State, Ohio State, they both play later tonight. Auburn is currently third, Alabama fourth, Missouri fifth. Oklahoma State a loser today in Bedlam. They lost to Oklahoma and Baylor leading Texas. So could it be a chaotic night? Sure, it could be. Well, you know, I mean, I, nobody wants to hear this, but one breaking news for Alabama was Oklahoma State, because that would have been an argument against Alabama. We've seen crazier things happen, but could Duke beat Florida State? I, I, that's really crazy. Third and three. Corey Grant in motion. Mason goes around the edge. He's so good at that. It's been there all night, hasn't He's it? He's so good at that ball. That play was designed to run between the tackles. It got stuffed down, nothing there, and he bounces outside and just makes a first down. First down, 10. Over 300 yards rushing in this game. Wow.
Substitution infraction. 12 men in the formation on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. See the visor on Gus Malzahn? That's because he so admired Steve Spurk. And there's the look at the confusion. I think they brought in Sean Coleman, number 72, is playing a little bit of tight end with another a 37 number on. They're bringing in an extra offensive lineman occasionally. Marshall to throw for only the seventh time. And his receiver fell down. He was open by three yards. It was Jay Prosh. Yeah, it was the wheel route, the famous wheel route that we saw Auburn use against Texas A&M. Prosh will come down here and go on the wheel to the outside. Defended well this time. The corner drops on the play, and Ponder just gets his hands on it. It was a bit underthrown. Nice yeah, play by did. Ponder. Yes, he did. Second down, 15. Mason slips. Boy, look at this. Uh, one five-yard penalty, and then Auburn tries a pass play, and now you got second and 15, and they run a draw, and this is not what Auburn is set up to do. Third down, 15. They lead by one, does Auburn. Sammy Coates. Yeah, and Ely's inside again. Tough matchup. Marshall comes back with the screen. Trey Mason has some blocks. Caught and dropped by E.J. Gaines. What a play. A gimmick play that time by Auburn. The offensive line freezes, and it's a throwback. Gimmick play, throwback, and E.J. Gaines makes the play. He makes the play, or that would have been a first down. Stephen Clark. For the season, he has had 48 punts. Only five have been returned. Marcus Murphy, number six, is back, hoping to return this one. Very high, fair catch call for and taken at the six-yard line inside the 10 again. Well, they did it last time. Yeah, they did it last time. 92 yards. There is a well-lived-in face. So is that one. The SEC Championship on CBS, presented by Dr. Pepper, is sponsored by Sonic, Cadillac, the Hobbit, Desolation of Smaug. And by Dr. Pepper 10. 28-27 here. Both teams with hopes of possibly jumping Ohio State. We saw chaos in 2007. Yeah, Gary. LSU, remember, had two losses coming into that SEC championship game. I went down in the locker room. After LSU won the game, they were despondent because they did not think they had a chance to play for the national championship. And then what happened ahead of them? Missouri and West Virginia lost, and LSU left all the way up there to play Ohio State. And won. So play hard out there. You never know what's going to happen in front of you, right? Exactly. First down, 10. 28 27. Henry Josie is the running back. Three receivers to the left and the flag thrown. Looks like a motion call Ball against start. Mizzou. Offense, number 81. Half the distance to the goal. Still first down. That's the tight end, Eric Waters. So he trots off, and Sean Culkin, number 80, takes his place. That's one of the tweaks that Missouri made this year from 2012. The tight end is involved a little bit more in blocking. The splits are smaller. They're not as wide as they were in 2012. First and 13. Another flag. Yeah, but, you know, they don't hurt as bad down here. They don't. <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> Ball star. <laughs> Offense. Number 65. Half the distance of the goal. First down. That is Mitch Morse, the right tackle. Frank 
Beckham. That, oh, I thought it was going to be picked so off by Davis. Wow. So did I. Oh. Davis smelled it all the way. He went over the top and almost made the play. Marcus Lucas, good thing Marcus Lucas is a big man because Davis right here almost makes the play. Watch him. He smells it and he jumps it. Second and 13, quick opener up the middle. And the remarkable story of Henry Josie continues because he has now gone over a thousand yards in this season of total redemption for him. Terrible, terrible knee injury 17 months ago. Third and four. Inside. Penalty. It will be. Robinson Therese on Jimmy Hunt. Therese, let's see if he grabs him. Yes, his left arm grabs him. Pass interference. Defense. Number 27. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Again, I mean, those are big men. Hunt comes in many times and plays the second tight end for this Missouri team. So that quick slant is very tough for Therese to get there. That replay didn't show the penalty, but it was a penalty. His left arm was on there. First down, 10. Now Franklin pressured, heaves it deep. Overthrown and incomplete intended for LaDamian Washington. Second and 10. Now 12 of 19 for 178 yards. Intercepted once. Well, let's see if D. Ford can make an impact here. He did it in the first half. He's been a little quiet here through the second quarter. He is number 30, left end. There's a change, and they're all coming. Franklin goes left, incomplete, intended. Out on the wing for Marcus Murphy. Third and ten. Ellis Johnson is starting to dial up a few more blitzes. He doesn't feel the defensive coordinator for Auburn doesn't feel comfortable sitting in the zone. He's getting mismatched, so he's trying to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands quicker. Long time assistant coach in the SEC. Spent a total of eight years in two different stints at Alabama. Third and ten. They're coming again. Franklin gets rid of it. It's incomplete. Yeah, the rush got him again. I think Ellis Johnson has decided that maybe the only way to stop the passing game is the pressure of the quarterback. He told me yesterday we may play more zone against these guys. But I think as he's watched the plays unfolded, he said, I got to get after the quarterback. Christian Brinzer is on to punt, number 92. Chris Davis is the deep man. He actually came with an all-out seven-man blitz that time. No help, just four guys covering. Windsor. Ooh, close. Davis at the 38. Chris Davis Jr. 43-yard punt, a 14-yard return for Chris Davis. Franklin frustrated. Time call. And we welcome you back to the Georgia Dome, 28-27 Auburn. And they've got the football at midfield. At halftime, somebody asked me, what do you think Missouri should do to just stop this running game from Auburn? And I jokingly said, maybe the defensive backs from Missouri could all limp out there and entice the pass from Auburn. If they all, you know, they all come out with holding their right. hamstrings. Yeah, hamstrings. Oh, I got a hammy. Maybe they'll be tempted to throw the ball. Like well, I doubt it. <laughs> Nick Marshall is 7 of 8 for 102 yards, but the most amazing factoid for the Auburn run game Trey Mason has 28 carries for 218 yards. Yeah, but both teams did force a punt to start this yep. third quarter. So the adjustments at halftime that Gary Pickle told Tracy, maybe they're working. That's Ricardo Lewis in motion. They go right up the middle again. 
Trey Mason. And that's that's that four-yard territory. You know, the biggest, one of the biggest plays, there was a lot of big plays in that Auburn-Alabama game, obviously. But remember, at the end of the second quarter, when Trey Mason, 21-7, Alabama led, Trey Mason gashed Alabama for 40 yards right up the middle. He gets it again, little stutter step as he motors over left right guard ultimately. Brandon Full still the only tight end that we've seen tonight. He wears number 11. By the way, the Missouri Tigers football team had trouble getting here yesterday. That's right, didn't even make it through the walkthrough. Uh, the terrible weather in the Midwest. And uh, they were late. Mason again on first and 10. 9.35 to go third quarter. One of the adjustments it looks like that Missouri has played, it, it is doing in the second, the third quarter after halftime is moving their linebackers up in the gaps. Now, you know, you know, Gus Malzahn's going to have an answer for that, and you're going to see that speed sweep and those bubble screens start to go. Three wide right, one left on second and nine. See how tight the linebackers are now. Yes, I do. Jay Frosch comes up. Mason fights for yardage. It'll be third down. Matt Hoke, Harold Brentley, defensive tackle. In the Stop. first half, Missouri had their linebackers way out here so that he could flow. Now they've got them up in those gaps to try to force that running game wide and take their chances. Big one here. Third and six. A one-point Auburn lead, 8.40 to go in the third. Now the pass rush for Missouri has to make an impact. They built this team behind Michael Sam, Shane Ray. Marcus Davis is on the field. Bottom oh. of the screen. Here's Marshall dropped, fourth down. Yeah, and it was not going to be a first down even if he caught it. Fourth and six. It was about a two-yard pass, and it would not have been a first down even if caught. Be what a 53 54 yard field goal right yeah. in that area. Parkey has missed one from 54. He had it long enough though before. Yes, he did. And uh, he did hit a 56 yarder in warm ups. So this one, fourth and six. Parkey missed from 54 earlier. This officially is 52 yards. Season long is 47. That may change right now. Auburn's field goal from Parkey. I don't think that youngster cared. Cody Parkey. Nice. Gus Malzahn. Did he go boom? No, he didn't. I'm disappointed. 8.17 to go in the third. 31-27 now, Auburn. Both Missouri and Auburn with hopes of vaulting into the final two in the BCS. Take us through this on the well, left. Well, here's the matchup, and here's the arguments for both sides. For Florida State and Ohio State, their argument is, hey, come on, we haven't lost a game. We're in one of the, you know, Undefeated power conferences right now, and no one lost team has ever leapfrogged an undefeated team from an AQ qualifying school. And Ohio State has 24 straight wins. Florida State has dominated their schedule. For the SEC, their argument is, come on, you can't take this away from us. We won seven straight national championships. How can you vote us out? We have the strongest conference, the most teams in the top 25, and we have won when we were the one lost team playing undefeated teams twice in the BCS title game. One more technically yes. when Alabama beat LSU, but in this one, this conference against outs other conferences in the outside. You want to come down on one side or the well, other? Well, I, I guess I'm going to have to. <laughs> I, I already of did course. it all week. I'm going to set knows. you up. You know <laughs> that. And then dodge. Yes. <laughs> Here's the kick. It's a touchback. All, All right. right, one more look. Well, I've got my disguises to get out of here because in this year, I'm going to put my GD and vote on this side. I think it would be unfair to have to have one of the other conferences have to have a two-loss 
get, I mean, come on. I mean, you can't. I can get the tiebreaker for the SEC. Right. I think a leapfrog is a little bit of a stretch. First down 10, Missouri. But I think there's a lot of people that will argue against me, and I probably will have to have a disguise to get out of here. <laughs> Here's the handoff. Hansbrough. Russell Hansbrough, number 32. And the tackle made by Craig Sanders, number 13. Second down, eight. Five wides, empty backfield. Franklin comes up and changes the play. Doriel Green Beckham, who had a big touchdown at the end of the first half, is wide to the left. Franklin rolls right. Puts it up in the air, almost intercepted. Jermaine Whitehead, who has one interception tonight, almost had number two. Yeah, it was a good defensive play by the offensive receiver. I think it was 88 Jimmy Hunt that time that knocked down the ball. Well, I think Whitehead would have caught this. Nice defensive play, and that's what you love as a quarterback. Bail me out. If I throw one, come on, play defense. Give us third and a chance to make a first down. Third down, eight. Play action. Inside pattern is Doriel Green Beckham. Watch out. He gets a block from Hansborough, and finally is shoved out of bounds. How about that? One of the most devastating plays in college football is this wide receiver jailbreak screen. Watch how perfectly the ball is thrown. Beckham catches it in front of him in dead stride. And then he's got those long legs to get around the defense. What a great call from offensive coordinator Josh Henson. That was a 37-yard game, first and 10 at the 36. Down by four, Missouri. They coming at him again, they aren't they? Are, and he gets rid of it. That's with Damian Washington, number two. Josh Henson, longtime LSU assistant, came to the staff, and then with the resignation of David Yost, last year's play caller and offensive coordinator, Gary Pinkle elevated Josh Henson to call the plays. He's co-offensive line coach, and get this, he had never called plays before. Second down nine, Marcus Murphy is the running back. Here's Franklin. Goes left. Oh, wide open. What a play by Sasser. Bud Sasser, number 21. Boy, this Auburn secondary, I gotta, I gotta say, if you're Missouri, you almost feel every time you run the ball, you're just giving your receivers a breather because can you get any more wide open than that? A total bust by Robinson Therese. Number 27, another first down. Could have had a 5 8 option. receiver on yep. that one. Speed rush, Marcus should, Murphy. Could be holding by Missouri on this play. No call. I think it was Marcus Lucas. End of the play on Therese. And he drives him into the ground. You really can't tell if. Therese just kind of throws himself on the ground or if there's holding on the play. Second and six. Jaleel Clark is now on the field, top of the screen. Franklin, no pressure. Uh -oh, wide open. There you are, touchdown Missouri. What a play call. They faked the wide receiver screen and slipped him out into the backfield. Ten yards, Marcus Murphy. What a play call by Mr. Henson, rather, the offensive line coach. Rather placid, wasn't he? In his uh, response to yeah, the TV. Yeah, that's because he was watching the guys block up front. He didn't even see it yet. <laughs> what a call. He faked the wide receiver screen that that was hit for that big first down play, and this time he slipped the running back into the, set, into the end zone. Andrew Baggett with the extra point. Missouri up by three. Remember the play just before. Was there holding right there? If there was, it was in the framework of the player. And then the touchdown call. 
Murphy slides out this way, and they fake the wide receiver screen out by the wide receiver right here. Nice play, fake the screen, froze the defense, and Casanova McKenzie never moved. Franklin now 16 of 26, 247. Three touchdowns. Let's go back to the studio for a Ford update. All right, Vern, thank you. We're going to Waco and following Case McCoy's second interception. It's Baylor's Glasgow Martin, 18 yards for the score. The Bears lead 30 to 10 with under four minutes to go. They could be on their way to the Fiesta Bowl as Big 12 chance. Back to you. Adam, thank you. 34-31 here. The SEC championship on the line. And look at Baylor. What a job Art Bryles has done since he moved into that spot as the head coach from Houston. How scary was it if you're an Auburn fan to watch that secondary not cover anybody on those plays? Back-to-back -back plays, wide open, Sasser and Murphy. No one covers the receiver. 5.35 to go in the third. Here's Baggett's kick. And uh, nice catch by the Photog. Don't forget, later in the game, the play of the game, presented by Napa Auto Parts. We have a plethora of options. It's always fun to get that word into the broadcast. 34-31, 5.35 to go. Well, Dave Steckel may have made a few adjustments with that defense, because those Missouri guys, the last three drives that Auburn has had the ball, they've only got three points. Stopped them at the end of the half, stopped them at the beginning of the first, the third quarter, and then held them to a field goal. That's good defense against this offensive juggernaut for Auburn. Mason, the running back, has carried 32 times. Uh oh, busted play. Marshall, sloppy tackle. Second guy gets him. Yeah, busted play between your two veterans. Nick Marshall, Trey Mason. One of them goes the wrong way. I'm not sure which one it was. Darvin Ruiz missed. Andrew Wilson made. Second down five. Sammy Coates hurries over to the right side. He's going out. Yeah. Substituted. Here's Posh. Here comes the sweep left. Mason again. Wow. That three-man line is just getting carved up. Just getting carved up. They went four-man line the last play and really put those linebackers up. When they go to that three-man line, they just get outside of it. That's a 19-yard gain for Trey Mason. I mean, there's no down. edge defender. I wonder if he's getting tired. Well, I'm getting tired of <laughs> it. Oh, yeah. uh, this is a matching of wills right now. You know Auburn feels that when Missouri gets the football, they're not going to be able to stop that passing game. And Missouri is trying to figure out a way to stop the running game. What a matching contrast. And why not go back to Mason? That's going to be short of the first down. Marcus Golden, number 33. And Mason, look at him. hes I think he's asking... No. They're going to give him a rest? Yeah, they he wants are. out. Yeah, he, he wanted wants out. out. Yep. I'm not, he might have hurt his ankle. He got twisted a little bit there. Quan Bray comes on. He's limping off, no doubt. Cameron Artis Payne, number 44, is now the running back. We've got Folsom Prosh in the backfield. Marshall has not had the big run in this game yet either. There's Corey Grant. Marshall, here we go. Race to the corner. He's knocked out of bounds at the one. You knew it was coming. When would they finally be able to figure out a way to get Marshall to the outside again? That three-man line. They figured a way to get outside of it, this time with the quarterback. And the hurry up. Mason is back in. Touchdown, Corey Brown.
could feel this one coming. Marshall was going to keep one sooner or later, and then once you establish the outside, they just hammer him inside again. Cody Parkey for the extra point. Advantage Auburn. 321 to go. Well, we were speculating when would Nick Marshall get an opportunity to carry the ball. Look at the three defensive linemen are inside. No edge right here. It's an automatic keep for Nick Marshall. Fakes it. Don't even have to block, although Jay Prosh did get a good block on the play. And then a missed tackle from the secondary by Matt White. And you're down there in a position to score again. 397 yards rushing, Vern. How about that? We're not even in the fourth quarter yet. I know it. Well, let's uh, get the reaction from Gus Malzahn. No boom. I mean, he's basically, now think about this, he basically invented this offense himself. 397. I chatted with him yesterday yes. briefly about his. I said, are these the same concepts as when you were at Hughes High School? He said, exactly. Exactly. I read a book called The Delaware Wing T, right. and he said, essentially, this is that offense. Just kept tweaking it and tweaking it, and it all starts. The way it looks, the, the dynamic part of it is, though, when you've got that modern-day running quarterback like Cam Newton or Nick Marshall that can also throw, what do you do to stop it? Not much. Here's the kick. Parkey. And it goes through the end zone. Gus Malzahn at Hughes High School got them into a state championship game. Moved on to Shiloh Christian High School where his quarterback as a senior was Rhett Lashley, who's now his offensive coordinator at the age of 30. Then went to Springdale High School, same town, not far from Fayetteville. He was uh, hired on as the offensive coordinator. Four of his high school players joined him at Arkansas. Yeah, that's when we first met him. Yeah, it didn't work out so well. No, but that Wildcat was established, and it just started from there. He took it, obviously, to Tulsa, then Arkan back to uh, Auburn, and then Arkansas State. Here's Henry Josie back on the field. Well, I'm trying to figure out now what Auburn does. First of all, what Auburn does is find a guy to cover him. Even if they complete it, at least know who you're covering. Will Ellis Johnson continue to blitz? They do. They bring six and seven almost every play now. It's going to be third down. Kim Fro Chris Frost, middle linebacker, number 17. Yeah, it's become a game now as who can make a negative play on defense. Because if you just stand there, you're going to get beat. Third down, eight, 245 to go in the third. Doriel Green Beckham is wide at the top of the screen. Covered by Chris Davis. Franklin doesn't look that way. Flag before the snap. Yeah, that changes everything. Now it's going to be third and like three. False start. Offense. Number 85. Oh, five drive penalty, still third down. Oh. You're crazy, Gary Pinky. Yeah, Pinkies I, did, I did not see it. I actually wasn't looking yeah. for it, to tell you the truth. I was looking at the center's movement. I didn't see it there either. I don't think it was in the frame on that one. It was outside the kind of like the offensive lineman box. Third down, 13. It was one of the wide receivers. They called it on Marcus Lewis. Yes. Was, uh, Lucas. Third and 13. Josie out of the backfield. Four-man rush. They tried the screen. They tried to set it up left side. What a big call. Incomplete. What a big call. Because I don't think D. Ford could have seen the movement. I think at least both guys are moving. Let's see if anybody moves over here. Keep looking. I didn't... I didn't see any I movement, didn't. I have to be honest. Maybe a little squat, but I didn't see it. I'll tell you one thing, D. Ford didn't see it. Christian Brinzer, the punter. Chris Davis backs up a little bit. Takes it, returns it. Got some room. To the 47-yard line. 
I, I actually thought D Ford caused the movement. Let's see if Ford moves first, and then there's a flinch. Oh, yes. The flinch was here, and it was after D Ford moved. That's a bad break for Missouri. On the other hand, they got a pretty good break early for the touchdown pass. You got it. There's D Ford. There's no doubt that D Ford caused the movement. First down, 10, Auburn. Mason slips a tackle, scoots down the sidelines. Matt White, number 17, who's had to make a lot of stops tonight, made that one. Yeah, they brought it back a little bit uh, from when he stepped out, but it was still a first down. Mason now with 267 yards. He'll try to add a few more, and he runs into the umpire. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, but that's part of the game. It get, they get hit on passes. They try to stay out of the way, but the way Trey Mason is shifting and cutting, there's nothing you can do. There's the get for Mason again. Nice play that time. Ross Pulley is the umpire, yeah. and you're right, Gary. I mean, this. Yeah, he's faking. What are you going to do? Right, he's faking six different ways, and the umpire's job. You know, the NFL has put him behind the offense, and you know maybe that's something that college football needs to look at because right now he's right in the middle of the action. Third down, three. Auburn, 50 percent on third down conversions. Cameron Artis Payne is in the lineup, and I think this is four down territory. Same play. 18 yard gain. Same play. Cameron Artis Payne. Wow! Touchdown, Auburn! He knew it was coming when they rolled the same play and they can do that because they have three options off of the same play. Cody Parkey for the extra point. The Auburn Tigers, this is breathtaking, have now rushed for 451 yards. Wow, it's, it's incredible to watch. All right, this is the sequence right here. Remember the first play, Cameron Payne takes it right up the middle. Cameron Artis Payne, and then Gus says, roll it. And when you roll it, they'll repeat it. Missouri does not quite get set. Braylon Webb takes the wrong side. How about and the Artis Payne, oh, oh my goodness. Wow. I don't know how he didn't break an ankle. 450 yards rushing. <laughs> Getting us ready for that big Army Navy game next week and all the, the triple option. Triple option. Yeah. Well, it ain't over. We do know that. There'll be some throwing still in this fourth quarter. 45 34. Nick Marshall, I mentioned earlier, he brought Wilcox County High School here to the Georgia Dome as a junior. And they won the state championship, the Class 2A Georgia High School Football Championship. Started his career, of course, I think most of you know by now, at Georgia. Dismissed from the team for his participation. There's Cameron Artis Payne. He's another transfer. 45-34. That's another one that will say. Nick Marshall, I mentioned earlier, he was a multi-talented two-sport athlete. Yeah. Look at this. Uh, with the headband, there's his first dunk. Now he's got the crossover. He's going to try to play both sports at Georgia. 
drains it and watch this last one with the windmill dunk. Nick Marshall's got some game. Don't want to play with him at the co-rack, do you? After he was dismissed from Georgia, he went to Garden City Community College in Kansas. One year there, 6-4 and four record. Here's Josie. Big hole! Josie's in a foot race. Look at this! Henry Josie! Yeah, and, and Ryan White didn't know what angle oh, to dear. take. Oh, no. Oh, no. He ran right into the cart. He shoved him into the cart. Yeah, that's going to be a personal foul. Ryan White took a, an angle, didn't know what angle to take, and then at the end of it, watch him shove him. More importantly, is Josie going to be okay? Oh, dear. Yeah, right there was uncalled for. His back into the tire, I think, right? I hope. Yeah, he, he, his back hit the cart. Ryan White was lined up at safety about 20 yards deep, and he took an angle that was After incredible. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 19 on the defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. Watch, break the line of scrimmage. He's into the secondary. Now watch Ryan White just basically go, where do I go? I don't even know if I'm as fast as this guy. Takes the angle, saves the touchdown, but the first thing that happens, Henry Josie gets the face mask, and that's what upset Ryan White and shoved him in and out of bounds and into the cart. Uh, Tracy will be informing us as soon as she finds out what the diagnosis is. Marcus Murphy is in, comes wide right, quarterback first and goal. There yeah. you are, Franklin. Touchdown, Missouri. First down, it's almost guaranteed. Connor McGovern, number 60, led the way. Will they go for two? Would make it a three-point game. Well, let's see. Franklin, empty backfield, 45-40 with nine this seconds to go in the third. tackle is eligible right here. Tackle's eligible. Quarterback draw. He's got it! James Franklin follows McGovern again. 45-42. back quarterback draws that was an odd formation it was on balance to the right and Justin Britt was eligible they actually ran the quarterback draw might want to be ready for that one later for Auburn in Missouri you remember our conversation about midway through the season if this season of the SEC on CBS was as good as 2006 yeah, exactly <laughs> we've surpassed that right oh my gosh uh, let's get an update from Tracy on Henry Josie's injury. Well, guys, no surprise that Henry Josie's in a lot of pain after hitting into that car. It is his back, like you guys mentioned. He's really trying to get back in there, but right now they are actually putting some tape, a bandage on the mid-back section. Can't see it clearly. Could be a cut there, but you can tell he just wants to get back in this game as soon as they do that, guys. That well, was a frightening moment. And uh, we'll keep our eyes posted on Henry Josie. Another look. As I mentioned earlier, if you know his personal story and what he went through to get back, you just got to root for the young man. Terrible, terrible knee injury against Texas a year and a half ago. Actually, more than that. Here's the catch taken by Corey Grant. Well, we've got a doubleheader for you on CBS this Saturday afternoon. Later tonight, 10 o'clock Eastern, the Mountain West Championship at Utah State at Fresno State. That'll be live. The Mountain West title on the line on CBS.
We want to go back to that uh, illegal procedure penalty for Missouri. We've been told by Steve Shaw, the head of officials, that even though D. Ford was in the neutral zone, the only guy that can react to it is the tackle in front of him. If the receiver flinches, that's the proper call. We wanted to correct that. 45-42, here is Corey Grant. He's loose. Like that matters. That's like your arms cut, your right arms cut off, and we're talking about a pimple on your left arm. My goodness. Well, let's uh, add to our rushing total. That was Corey Grant, 43 yards, and at the end of three, the Auburn Tigers have rushed for 494 yards. That's the end of three, 45-42. We'll return to the Georgia Dome right after this word from your local station. We welcome you back to the Georgia Dome fourth quarter. If you're a fan of defense, you're probably tempted to click off here. 40, 97 points so far. Well, I, I said Missouri had to score in the 30s. I, I was going to finish my sentence saying in each half. They have scored. Th <laughs> it's going to be 60 to win this game, I think. Holy cow. Look, recognize that fellow. One Put, of the great athletes. Bo's in. going. Put me in. Yes. Bo Jackson. Turned 51 a couple of weeks ago. First and 10, 45-42 as we get set to go in the fourth. All right, Trey, Mason actually guessed wrong that time. Maybe the first misread he's had in the game. Uh, Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, I've got really bad news for you. I'm giving you the honor of doing the Geico game recap. Well, Geico's going to have to pay more <laughs> for that many points. They have to do more. Um, I've, you know, you don't see much like this, especially in Anderson. It's a new world for SEC football in this game. I mean, it used to be every first down mattered, every punt mattered. Now it's points, and you better gobble up yards. Up the middle, Nick Marshall to the 30-yard line. I mean, you almost have to say, as Auburn has surpassed the 500-yard rushing mark in this game, okay, if they don't get to 600, I don't know if they can win. Imagine saying that. If they don't rush for 600 yards, you lose. Well, here we go, third down and eight with a three-point lead, opening seconds, and they hustle. This is going to go fairly quickly. Dismutes. The center snaps it back. They fake the screen. There we go, Trovon Reed, number one. That was a little bit of tit for tat. Very similar to the play that Bryant was run before. That's a gain of 21. It was a gimmick formation by Auburn. They went unbalanced on the play. And they did it real fast, and it confused Missouri. Now, there's a huddle among the officials. And they're saying to Dismukes, get back. I don't see a flag anywhere. See, this receiver right here, I'm not sure where it is, is covered up. So the other eligible receivers are here, 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 and here. Those are the eligible guys, and it's an unbalanced formation. There's no foul on the play. First down. And you saw what Sammy Coates did. He didn't go downfield. He was the one who faked the pass, right. but he wasn't even eligible to catch a pass. Very well-disguised play by Gus Malzahn. That's a nice catch by you, by the way. Well, I don't know what to say. What else is there to do? It's all offense. <laughs> right now, the Missouri fans are saying, can we get back in the Big 12 where they play defense? <laughs> <laughs> I've really never seen anything like this. Well, we've come a, a, a quite a distance from LSU 9, Alabama 6 in overtime, number one versus number two. Well, 127 plays have been run through three quarters. And it's first and goal. Yeah. 
Mason is the running back. Marshall fakes it, goes left. Caught from behind and dragged down by Braylon Webb, number nine. So it was first and goal, and Nick Marshall keeps it. Coney Ely has a chance, and then cleaned up late by Braylon Webb. Coney Ely is just dashing into the backfield now. They don't know who has the ball, so get back there and make something happen. Second and goal. Corey Grant, number 20, is on the field. He gets it, goes up the middle, down inside the two. It'll be third down. Yeah, flag on the play, though. I don't know if this formation was legal, to tell you the truth. Illegal formation on the offense. Five players in the backfield. Five yards from the previous spot. Still third down. Yeah, Quan Bray should have been up at the line of scrimmage, and he moved back, and that was the fifth guy. Quan Bray should have been up on the play. That would have been a legal formation. Since he's back, you already have four other guys. And you know, no C.J. Uzuma here. That's where they used to like to go with the football number 81. Right. He's not in the game. Has not been all night. Brandon Fulce is the tight end, number 11. He's up on the line to the right side. Mason, not much. It's a big penalty. Big, big penalty. This is almost like a tennis match now. If you don't hold serve, you're in danger of losing the set. Yes, I agree. Just to reconfirm now here he comes first time we've seen him tonight Uzama we've been calling him Uzama and Uzama all year and he's on the field well if I was Missouri I'd cover him because he's their touchdown man play action Marshall got it Ricardo Lewis oh, no short now what fourth and inches well, there's no way they kick a field goal no, here. No, no, I don't. Uh... Right. That's for, like, wasting money, basically. <laughs> Fourth and goal with a three-point lead. The SEC championship game presented so, by Dr. So who Kramer. gets it? Does Trey Mason get it, or does Dick Marshall keep it? Mason's to the left. My money's on Marshall. Fourth and goal. No, nope, should have called Mason. I don't know if he made it. He did not. It's oh, close. They yes, he did. Now they signal. Just a straight dive play. Everybody's got to block someone. He gets stopped initially and then falls across the line. Good call. Well, the signal came understandably a bit late. It was tough to see yes. in that pile of bodies. It was the foul. on the field for the, was a touchdown. The previous play is under further review. The only thing that could stop this is if his knee was down before he broke the plane. Gets stopped. Watch him bounce out. And then fall across the line. I think that one's going to stand. Yes, it will. Yeah. Quite sure it will. One more look. I don't think there's any issue with the knee, Gary. No, nope, he was actually yeah. on the back uh, of Reese Mukes. Mukes. Just Mukes, yes. Yeah. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. All right. <laughs> Have a little popcorn treat. I wonder how many 75-yard drives we've had tonight. We need a calculator. That one was eight plays, 75 yards. Took an inordinate amount of time. It was four minutes. Cody Parkey for the extra point. Make this a seven-point game. Got it. 
will make it a 10-point game. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, 10 I'm points. I'm sorry. Good for you. Well, it's <laughs> I doesn't can't. mean anything. No, I, I know it. Missouri serve. Oh, he does a Heisman. Oh. Somewhere Desmond Howard is smiling. Hey, when you have 275 yards, you do what you want. And now it's time for our Geico Game Recap. Gary Danielson having foregone the uh, opportunity of doing this. Let's see if we can keep up. Here's Marshall. He had two touchdowns in the first half. Gaines, a fortuitous fumble recovery. One hop into E.J. Gaines' arms. Dives for the Missouri score. Trey Mason. He had a pretty above-average first half. There's one touchdown. He had a total of two. Doriel Green Beckham in the first half. There's one. And in the second half, Cody Parkey, career long 52 yarder. And then here is Murphy in the end zone. Marcus Murphy got by the linebacker and uh, Cody Grant for a touchdown. That's from two yards out. Couple that with Cameron Artis Payne. This was for 15 yards. James Franklin, the quarterback, bangs in for the score. And then just moments ago, Trey Mason for a touchdown to make it a 10-point margin, 52-42. Mason has now run for 275 yards. That's amazing. And check this out. Auburn has 633 yards in the game. Mizzou has 462. We have a total of 1,095 total yards. And we've still got most of the quarter to play. Parkey again, so we're going to have an opportunity for a 75-yard drive. Trey Mason. Well, you know, he has the wiggle, he finds the holes, he presses it, and he's strong. I mean, he's bringing everything to this game. And if you add to that the confusion and deception in this offense, it's a being impossible to stop for Missouri. You know, every, all the other defensive coordinators in the SEC that's faced this right now are going, well, we, we damn near stopped him cold. Franklin deep right side. That's up in the air. And incomplete intended for Ladanian Washington. Jonathan Mincy defending number six. Nice coverage by Mincy. That's where you have to be on his outside shoulder. Go up as high as you can and make a play. Second down, 10. Four wides. Option, pitch. Marcus Murphy. Oh, nice, nice tackle. tackle. Yes, Boy, it was. It ever. Jerome Whitehead. He was the lane runner that time. That's the safety that has the pitch man. That's his assignment in assignment football. Murphy tries to cut inside in a one-hand tackle. Third down. Nine needed. Franklin looks left. Is chased right deep forward. Has him. Finally, a third and long to turn loose those defensive ends for Auburn. He goes around the outside, pressure inside, flashes him out, and what a play by that front four for Auburn. You gotta start smelling it right now if you're Gus Malls on one more touchdown, you can put this thing away. And there is a whistle before the snap. 
Looks like an offensive illegal motion call. False start on the offense. All 11 players were never set prior to the snap. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. 9.55 to go. 52-42 in this defensive gym. Another fourth down. Now Brinzer from the end zone. Chris Davis is back. As it bounces, it takes a sideways hop. And gets a little bit of a Missouri roll. That's a 49-yard punt. Nothing on the return. 9.35 remaining. Auburn by 10. D Ford with the sack. And a smile. The SEC Championship on CBS, presented by Dr. Pepper, is sponsored by Dodge. Verizon. K Jewelers. And by Bud Light. Fourth quarter, Auburn leads by 10. Gary, how about this offense? Well, right now, you're going to have to see if Gus Malzahn can take some time off the clock. But, you know, there's a little bit of deception, a little bit of misdirection, but there's a lot of blocking. This time, Jay Prosh, Brandon Foles both fit, and downfield goes Trey Mason. There's a little bit of everything in the offense, and when it all everybody fits their block, it's really tough to stop. And they've got the ball again at the 36-yard line. First downs and clock. Obviously, a touchdown here would be huge. The Missouri defense has been on the field for 76 plays. They need to get off. Got to stop here as soon as possible. Ricardo Lewis on first down. Trey Mason, another carry. Yep. Just stop. back to the line of yep. scrimmage. Stop that time. Yep. 42 carries for Trey Mason. Yeah, I, I don't know if Auburn can go slow. You know, I, don't, I just don't know if it works for them. That's right. Gets them out of whack. This will be a quick snap. When the receivers leave, then there'll be a quick snap. Corey Grant is the running back, and he winds up to the left side. Now in motion, gets the handoff, the sweep. He's got Fulce out in front. Number 11, a little one-man convoy, and the tackle made again by Matt White, number 17. Boy, this three-man line has just been being gashed by the outside runs by Auburn. They've been bringing those three men inside. There's no force on the outside of that defense. Nobody's got the edge set, and they're just running to the outside of the defense. 8.41 remaining. Let's go back up the middle. Not much this time either, Trey Mason. Nosa Igwe, he played on the 2010 National Championship team led by Cam Newton. I think he's the only one on the roster who actually played in that game. Young man from Mansfield, Texas. Number 94 on the bench. Second and eight. Marshall's got it. Uh, Ricardo Lewis was trying to fend off the blocker, but he didn't see Braylon Webb coming up from behind. So number nine makes the stop. Field goal, touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. And all of those drives were quick. But a stop here is still a football game for as fast as Missouri can score throwing the football. Third down, six. Remember the Georgia game at the end when they could not finish it for Auburn. Sweep again. Grant. And it stopped. Yes, it is. Donovan Bonner, number eight. Still plenty of time in this football game. Bonner makes back-to-back -back tackles. 
on Marshall and then on Grant. Auburn will run the clock down and then punt after the five yard penalty. Still another 17 seconds to go on the play clock. take a timeout so it's still under five yards or will they take the penalty? The left game, offense number 14, five-yard penalty, still fourth down. See, the only decision there is if you took a uh, timeout, then any offsides would be a first down. Now with the delay of game and the five yards back, a mistake doesn't give Auburn a first down. Stephen Clark on the punt. And he's been deadly with these punts. Oh, what a weapon. Forrest Hill will snap it back. Fourth down and nine, 6.42 to go. And just in case, Marcus Murphy drifts back. See what Stephen Clark can do. The senior, ironically, from Kansas City, Missouri. It's down at the three. It cost him about six or seven yards. It was Morgan Stewart again, unfortunately for him. Last time we mentioned his name, he was uh, touching an onside kick. That's right. It cost him about six yards on the play. Missouri does have the ball down by ten. Here's tonight's lineup on CBS. We'll begin the evening with Mike and Molly, followed by 48 Hours Presents Nelson Mandela, Father of a Nation, and then from Fresno, the Mountain West Championship, Utah State at Fresno State. Missouri's got the ball, but they are deep in their own territory. Ball is actually marked at the four. They're going for their first conference title. They shared one in 69. Last outright was 1960. There's the sweep to the right side, Hansborough, which is, serves as a reminder that Henry Josie uh, was pushed out of bounds and fell into the corner of a cart, suffered a back injury, and have not seen him since. No, we have not. You know, Ellis Johnson, I talked, spoke with him yesterday, and he said if it gets into a passing situation, we feel we should be able to make the plays. Nice coverage from Jerome, Jonathan Mincy, rather. The yep. catch he, is complete. He anticipated the play, excuse yep. me, Vern. But Ellis Johnson was telling me that if it gets into an all-out passing game, he expects his front four to win. There's Josie on the sidelines. Third and five. 522 to go. Franklin flips it out left side. Doriel Green Beckham. I don't know. Where's the spot? It's fourth down. Yes, it is. And you, and you have to go for it, sure. don't you? Yeah. Again, the jailbreak screen to the outside. This time, no blitz by Auburn, and they defend it. Chris Frost, number 17, made the tackle fourth and one. The play of choice has been, for Missouri in this situation, the speed option to the outside. Let's see if they run it again. They would run it left if the option's on. They'd run it to the bottom of the screen. They'll throw it. Inside, incomplete. Knocked away by Chris Davis. What a play. Chris Davis beat him to the spot. He beat Doriel Green Beckham to the spot and made the defensive play of the game. Bottom of the screen. 
He's playing down a distance. He's not backing up, and he aggressively went for the slant. Chris Davis, the star of last week's win with that miraculous missed field goal return. And it's fourth down, James Franklin. That might do it. Yeah, but it, that's all you can do. That was the call. You got to throw it there. If they defend it, they defend it. I'm kind of surprised we didn't get the option. First down, 10. Mason, of course. Mason, of course. season for Auburn. What a night for Trey Mason. 290 yards, four touchdowns. Just a, at this point in the game, the Missouri defense that has been out there for 82 plays and now becomes arm tackling. One by Wilson, another one in the secondary by Gaines, and you're not going to arm tackle this running back. Runs right through Wilson, right through Whitehead, and right through Gaines. And Gus Mel's on. What a route he's taken for this spot. What a spot this guy has had. And Chris Davis. Fifty-nine, forty-two, four, twenty-two remaining. And take a look at the defensive play on fourth down. Yeah, Chris Smith was guessing slant. He was right. He defended it, and then the next play, handed off to number twenty-one, and you're not going to arm tackle him. And as he gets back to the sideline and celebrates with his teammates, his offensive lineman that blocked for this team to rush for five hundred and thirty-three yards, you have to wonder. Has Auburn swayed any votes? Yeah. Because they've got to turn, what, about 20 votes their way from Ohio State. They've been awfully impressive. One of the things I've always hated about the BCS is it does not reward a team that improves. Auburn is a much better team now than the team that lost to LSU early in the year. They were playing with half an offense with Nick Marshall. He was too young. He had not even gone through spring football. They're a much better team now. Well, here's another touchback, and I need to ask you. Now, a while ago, you came down on the side of Ohio yeah, State. It, it, I mean, Ohio State's going to have to play some football tonight. Yes, they will. I they're, agree. They're going to have to play some football. And you saw the graphic. I hope that Trey Mason has the second highest total rushing in a single game, and it's a record held by Curtis Kirkendall, Kikendall, that was established in 1944. Can't we just do a four-team playoff this year, Vern? Yeah, well, wouldn't Come you on. like? Come on. Wouldn't you like? Just somebody, I mean, they change everything else in the country all the time. Hail Mary for Doriel Green Beckham at the 35. And appropriately, Chris Davis is defending. Chris Davis, after he returned, now take a look at this, Gary. But he's got about a 40-inch leap right there. We talked about four inches. The receivers are taller, but right now, this Auburn defense is smelling a win. Second down and 10. They slumped for a while, but they caught it again. Franklin, Look. got it! Marcus Lucas! Well, I will have to say this. The offense for Auburn is definitely BCS ready. I don't know about the defense being BCS ready. Nope. That was a 44-yard game. Here's Franklin running. Caught from behind by Gabe Wright, number 90.
1996, Florida defeated Alabama 45-30 in this game. That 75-point uh, total was the previous high. We're at 101 points in this one. Kaboom. Chris Davis on Jimmy Hunt. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson. This was 28-27 Auburn at the half. It got to be 45-42, and then Auburn has really continued its offensive explosion. And now Chris Davis, who uh, ran into the history books last week with that missed field goal kick return. Here's Franklin. Still running at the 10. I thought this would be a bigger part of the football game. Quarterback draws, quarterback counters. I thought Missouri needed to establish one more runner. Now, obviously, you know, should Missouri score here, we're going to see it'll, you know, one onside kick. If they get it and drive again, we might see two. First and goal. Got him. Nosa Igwe, number 94. Ellis Johnson said his guys have to win up front. That time a wholesale change. The front four for Auburn after the sack. 2.35 to go. Henry Josie is back on the field. How good is that to see? Inside. Oh, boy. Yeah, he missed the ball. He, he juggled it. That st same jailbreak wide receiver screen has been thrown about four or five times. This time slightly behind Doyle Green Becker, and he did not come up with it. Third and goal. 17 point Auburn lead. Hoping they win this game, A. And B, waiting out a very long yeah. night. You know, it's not fair to anybody. Not fair to Ohio State, uh, not fair to Auburn, not fair to... But Ohio State still has to play. Out of the backfield, Murphy still up. And finally taken down by Jonathan Mincy, 2.15 to go. Fourth and goal. Missouri in that chaotic year for the BCS, and good riddance, I think all of us say. Missouri needs 17 points here, Vern. You know, they could kick a field goal on fourth down here. Sure. They uh, eschew the field goal, fourth and goal. Into the end zone, left, incomplete. Jonathan Mincy covering Doriel Green Beckham. And the celebration is going to begin. They tried to go to the tallest receiver against the short defender, but Mincy kept his position. No touchdown. And a first down as the ball goes over. Well, one of these, as the open said, one of these Cinderella rides had to end. Yeah. hard to believe what Auburn and, and actually Missouri too but Auburn as the winner I mean they were losing 42 to nothing at halftime to Alabama just the last game of last year here's Mason they're gonna get him 300 yards I wouldn't think so he's got that uh, make sure we know how many yards officially he's given on that carry six he's at 296 he needs four more to go over 300 he has carried 45 times that's an Auburn record Carnell Cadillac Williams once carried it 45 yards one more time guess what He's over 300 in the game. He'll get a standing ovation. They'll take him out of the game if the bench realizes he has it. You know what, Gary? He's only three yards of the all-time record set in 44. 
Here's the replay of Trey Mason. I hope just not to rub it in, obviously, but for his They're sake. They're going to take a knee. Yeah, they are. Yes, they are. Here comes the Gatorade bath. A splash for the celebration. How about Gus Malz on two SEC championships as offensive coordinator in 2010? 56 points. Tonight, 59 points. What a marvelous year for both Tiger teams night especially for Auburn three and nine a year ago zero and eight in SEC play and the SEC championship team and Gus Malzahn's with Tracy Wilson well congratulations coach you go 12 and one you go SEC champs you beat Alabama yeah. what kind of year has this been for you after the season you had last year well it's been unbelievable I'm proud of our players they find a way to win you know we played a lot of good teams that's one of the better teams in the country SEC championship couldn't be happier what about Trey Mason and the job him and the O-line did today and here he is right now yeah just proud of him. one of the best running backs in all of college football and he proved it again today I can't let you go without asking no matter what happens tonight do you think your team should play for the national championship. Well, I'll tell you what, we play in the best league in college football. I think we won the last seven. And you go through our schedule, you deserve it. Congratulations. Enjoy it. I have to talk to you, Trey. Four touchdowns over 300 yards. You made it look so easy. How'd you do it? Uh, my team. You know, I can't do it without them. But it was pure determination. I told myself I had to have the biggest game of my life today. And God blessed me with it. And you struck a little Heisman pose in the end zone. We saw it. Had to. You know, that's just a personal goal and dream of mine, and I want to reach that. Good luck. Congratulations. Thank you. Guys, back to you. All right, Tracy, thank you, and congratulations to the Auburn Tigers as Nick Marshall spends a few moments with the television reporter. And now it's time for the Napa plays plural of the game. Here's Marshall. Mason straight ahead through defenders into the end zone. Touchdown, Auburn! At the Missouri 13-yard line. Straight ahead, Mason to the 10, breaks a tackle to the 5. He's in! You may put this one on ice! The voice of Rod Bramblett, Auburn play-by-play -play man, who had a couple of sensational calls in the last two Auburn games prior to tonight. Now the player of the game presented by Chick-fil-A. Trey Mason, 304 yards, only four, four yards away from setting the all-time Auburn rushing record, an average of 6.6, four touchdowns, and he carried the ball 46 times. Well, part of it, you have to give credit to the system. Then you got to just look at that offensive line that just did a wonderful job. But I think Trey Mason would be a dynamic back in any offense. And don't forget the Jeep postgame show is coming up here from the Georgia Dome. Tim Spencer, Brian, scores and highlights. And a look forward. Now the long, long night begins for the Auburn Tigers as they await results from Florida State and from Ohio State. For Gary Danielson and Tracy Wilson, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from the Georgia Dome, the final 59-42. The Jeep Post Game Show is up next after these messages and a word from your local station.